God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Glory to God. Supernatural Life Church, are you excited? Yeah. Are you happy at what God is doing? Yeah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you have started to do. Your word says that whatever you began, you are faithful to complete it. Father, we thank you for this church. The expansion will continue. The house will continue to grow. And every individual will continue to grow. In the name of Jesus. No one is permitted to remain small here. No one is permitted to remain ordinary here. The grace that is growing this house will also grow your life. In the name of Jesus. Many will think you look young, but you'll be doing great things. The things that take others 10 years to do, you will do in 10 months. In the name of Jesus. If you receive it, shout it louder. Amen, somebody. Can you hear me? Yes, they can hear me. Um, like I was saying, I'm a bit emotional tonight because this is literally what I saw. When I stepped on, the, I don't know if I said it there or I said it to you when you came to the hotel. I'm not even sure. You said it when you came to the hotel. I told them I saw the wall where you were, the last place you were. As I stood up to preach, I saw the wall behind collapse. And I saw a multitude. And I saw them sitting in amphitheater style. I told you. So standing here and see what God has done. It's only our God that will tell us something before he does it. Yeah. I dare not that God. It's only our God that will tell you I will do this thing and he will do it. I think we need to celebrate God one more. And I think you need to celebrate your pastors for their obedience. Because this was a faith move. An absolute faith move. And I honestly don't believe that some people are sitting down to celebrate God like that. My God, that you are sitting down to celebrate like this. Praise God. Yeah, please sit down. Um, we're so excited to be here. Um, just like I said in that video, that we'll be here again, and um, it will be it will not be in this in that venue. Um, I also want to prophesy again that we'll be here again, <laughs> and it will be multiple services, multiple services in the name of Jesus. Listen, I don't want you to feel that you are too young or you are too small. What God is doing with this church, God also will do with your life. Um, we're on a mission here this week, so whatever you do, don't miss tomorrow and make sure you bring. I want this whole place to be jammed tomorrow. So whatever you do after today, call people, tell people, go pick people, whatever you need to do. I want this hall to be jammed tomorrow because we're like marking off a new season over this house. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? And it's not a coincidence that uh, we're talking about love and money. We're also going to raise multi-millionaires from this assembly. We're here to release that grace. You will look young, but the things you will do will be more than your age. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Listen, listen. God is not a localized God. What that means is that God is the God of the whole earth. He's not limited to what is happening in your geography. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So whatever you do, please don't miss tomorrow. We're going to prophetically release you into a fresh grace. That, you, that, you, that you, you'll be amazed at what God will do. In the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Come on, one more time. Let's jam our hands together. Please take your seats. All right, so today we're starting the series Love and Money. Before um, we start, um, again, um, I have, between the last time we came here, was it November? Okay, so between November and now, um, I have two new books out. All our other old books are still available at the back. If you don't have them, you can get them. But there are two new books out uh, from that time till now. Um, this one is titled, this one is a bestseller, it's, it's been selling everywhere in the world. It's titled, Seven Things I Badly Want to Tell Women. Are there women in this house? Yes. I can't hear you. Are there women in this house? Yes. So, after about 25 years of counseling women, these are seven things I badly want to tell women. So, if you're a woman in this house, um, get this book. Um, the forward was done by Falon Rachel Lakija, the richest black woman. You know, um, so, you need to get it. I shared seven things that I feel are important for every woman to know. So, wherever you are, please make sure you pick a copy. And as usual, um, tomorrow we'll be doing, we'll sign some books after the service again tomorrow. So if you, if you buy, please make sure you bring it for us to sign and autograph it for you if, you, if that's what you like. All right, but please, buy for somebody, buy for any woman. If you're a guy too, buy for your babe, buy for your mother, buy for your auntie. Praise God. Yes, it's a book for any woman. Praise God. The seven things I badly want to tell women. And besides, if you don't like the content, my face is in front of it. So you'll be seeing my picture. <laughs> Praise God. And the second one is two in one. It's titled, How to Know if He or She Really Loves You. You know, we talk about serving breakfast all the time. <laughs> this is anti-breakfast book. It's, you'll be breakfast proof. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So what we did in this book is like, it's two in one. How to know if he, she really loves you on one side and how to know if he really loves you on the other. So it's two books in one. So whether you're male or female, you buy the one, read the one that concerns you. If you want to read the woman's one, you can. If you want to read the man's one, but there's two books in one. Um, it's a good for you to buy for yourself and for somebody else. What we did there was that many people don't know what true love is. We live at a time when, you know, love is very confusing. And it's not our fault. Music has their own version. Movies have their own version. And so everybody's confused as to what love means. But we, we, what we try to do is that we try to separate the feelings of love with the facts of love. You see, when it comes to the feelings of love, or let me say this, when it comes to fake love and real love, at the beginning, they all look alike. That's why um, I like dogs. How many people like dogs here? You're a dog person or an animal person. I, I love dogs. I've always, I've always had dogs since I was young. I remember my first dog. His name was Jack. It was a cat that killed it on my street. <laughs> so I've always loved dogs. But at a stage in my life, I stopped buying dogs as puppies because at puppy, every dog is cute. Do you understand? Uh -huh. If you've ever bought dog and the express road before as puppy, it's very cute. All dogs are cute when they are puppies. It's when they start to grow. You will know what you bought. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's not what the man said it is that it really became when it grew. Some dog, when they grow, instead of barking, they talk. <laughs> Some dog said, if you think it's dog, when it grew, if you find it's antelope, you bought antelope. <laughs> so at puppy level... <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, said, well, I started buying dogs as adults. So <laughs> I buy it food. I did, can he bark? Can he fight? Uh -huh. I remember my friend, uh, Fela Duruto, he used to have people jumping. He, was, he lives in VGC, so people were jumping into their fences and all that, stealing things. So he was bothered about it. I said, it's very simple. Buy, buy a dog. <clears throat> if you buy a dog, nobody can jump into your fence. So it's okay. You know what? Pass okay. Arrange a dog for me. Because I'm a dog person. I'm a dog plug, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I see, I was at the time I had 17 dogs in my house, 17. <laughs> I'm a dog person. <laughs> Praise God. You will hear some of those stories today. We're talking about love and money. My first wedding gift to my wife. We have not even finished paying for reception hall. So I bought two dogs. <laughs> you will hear Jimmy's love and money we're talking about. We will just do all those things. So <laughs> I've been through a lot. So. Yes. <laughs> she has. She will just do all those things. I was very financially responsible. We would just you guys those things. So, so I was a dog plug. So fella called me and said, hey man, okay, arrange the dog for me now. So I brought one dog called Shaka. <laughs> if you hear the name, you should know. By their name, you shall know them. The name is Shaka. That dog was like a lion. It was a bubble, massive dog. If you can see his eyes, his face. And I, you know me, I don't buy puppy again. I buy adult. Can he fight? Can he bark? I want to see the dog in action fire bite. Not that you go and buy puppy. He's cute. When he grew, he not turned to antelope. His mouth come long. Pass. No, no, no. I've suffered those things before. I bought Shaka, adult dog. Only problem was that Shaka was very, very wild. When we brought Shaka to the house, to even bring it down from car. Shaka no good to come down. 
Oh. All of us just stay with the brake. I'm shouting, please. Can you, <laughs> can you alight from the vehicle? It didn't come down. And everybody, nobody was scared. Nobody could go near it. So the only thing, later when I got an idea to bring, I had a female dog. So when I brought the female dog, so when Shaka saw the baby, ah, see baby, he came down. <laughs> he came down by himself when he saw <laughs> female dog. <laughs> you know, so finally we delivered the dog to Fela's house. Great, beautiful. Nobody was could jump into the compound. The only challenge was that people couldn't, from outside, come in. People from inside, too. <laughs> they can't go out because you dare not pass. Shaka doesn't know anybody. You don't send anybody. <laughs> Nobody must pass here, so the children couldn't go to school, family couldn't go to work, <laughs> they can't come out. <laughs> so Fela said, come and carry Shaka, please. We are terrified in our own house. So I came and I took Shaka away, and I brought on that dog. That was the most useless dog. <laughs> he kind of liked it at the beginning, but that dog, it doesn't even stand up. That's the kind of dog that opened door for arm robber, if I'm wrong with and even escort them to where they... I mean, it was that. So, the best life of all these gist I'm giving you is that at the popping stage of both real love and fake love, everything feels the same. Everything feels the same. You will have attraction. When it's real love and when it's fake love, there will be attraction. Is somebody get what I'm saying? When it's real love and when it's fake love, there will be excitement. Is somebody get what I'm saying? When it's real love and when it's fake love, there will be connection. But there is difference between the feelings of love and the facts of love. So what I broke down in this book is how to know if he loves you. If he's a guy, these are, there are seven things a guy must do for you to know he loves you. Beyond this, your feelings. If it's a girl, there are seven things to know that she'll do if she loves you. Beyond your feelings. So I broke it down. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I tell guy, I don't want to go into the book. I'll just sit down tomorrow. But buy the book. Let's not waste time on that one. So, do an intro now. <laughs> love and money. <laughs> Okay. All right. So basically, um, of course, I know you already know by now that money is important. How many people know that money is important? Money is important, guys. We, we can't even have this service without money. Is somebody get what I'm saying? We can't have it without money. Money is important. All right. And it can never be overemphasized. It can never be overemphasized. And of course, statistically, money is one of the things that always causes quarrels in, in marriages. Money is one of those things that causes quarrels in what? Marriages. A lot of homes have been rocked because of financial, you know, um, issues. And um, it, it starts from how you manage yourself and your relationships at these beginning stages. See, poverty is not good. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Poverty is not good. No matter what you do, please make sure you handle the money aspect of your life. Money. See, there are some things you can miss the class. There are some courses you can miss the class. Do you understand? I did Yoruba in SSC, in, in Waiyek. I did Yoruba. And that, I was not born again then. So I had already planned I was sitting near a Yoruba speaking person. And he would just give me the, the expo, the answer. Now, we had already planned. All of us sat around the person. The only problem was that some useless people around us that was sat down the person were now making noise. When you are copying, you copy silently. There's a way to copy. I was not born again then, please, so don't, don't try this at home. <laughs> so we had a plan. Say, at least confirm C for add it to our work, five credits. When, when they were now making noise, the villager now came and sat down on top of my desk <laughs> to monitor those making noise. I thought he would stand up in five minutes. When I saw that this man is not planning to... Stand up. I submitted my empty sheet and went to. <laughs> Do you understand? There are some courses you can play with like that. There are some courses in life you can't play with. Money is one of those courses. You can't play with money. No matter who you are, life, to be alive, costs money. As you are alive here now, you are wearing clothes, you've eaten today, you are going to drink water. Those things are paid for. It might not be paid for by you, but it's paid for by somebody. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right, so there are some courses in life. There are some topics in life you can't be too busy for. You can't be too spiritual for. As powerful as Jesus was, he paid for things. He paid. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's not everything he prayed for. Some things he paid for. So you can't play with money. And when it comes to love and money, mixing them without understanding them will cause an explosion. So you must get the money factor right. So what we are going to do today, we want to, um, should we do the couple thing first? Are there married couples here? 
If you're a married couple, can I see your hand? If I'm a married couple, you don't mind stand. Just stand where you are. Let me know. I see you, you are married. Okay. Now, if your spouse is not in this service, if your spouse is not in this service, sit down. If your spouse is not in this service. Okay. So we want to call a Colotia couple. You look like you people are call. Because every other person, those people are carrying their babies. We won't want to call them outstage. Which other people? Okay. Is that your wife? No. Okay. Wife, where are you? Okay. No. So let's call that couple. Is that okay? Do you guys okay. want to Can you volunteer yourself? Two people now. Yes. Aya, come. Please come. Let's put our hands together for them. Two people. Please come. Okay. Um, is, is there another couple? We want you to come. We can do one more couple. Which other couple want to volunteer? Any other couple that wants to volunteer? Ah, uh, Aya, come now. You're looking so nice. Please clap for them. Come on the stage. Yes. You're wondering what you want to do. Yes. We want to finish you. Whatever it is. Please keep coming. Can we clap for them? Keep clapping for them. We will need sheets of paper. And pens. And pens. Somebody should help us with four sheets of paper and pens. Somebody's wondering what you're going to do. It's trouble. Whatever it is, it's not going to end well. Just, <laughs> it will end well in Jesus' name. Ladies, please, can you come to this side? Yes, yeah, so ladies, come this way. Because the man is already asking you, what I need to do? Tell me your account number. Tell me everything. Tell me everything I need to do. <laughs> Just four sheets of paper, if you can, and a pen. This is my, my bottle of water. Is there space? Yes. You are too far. Let somebody bring it. Can we have the four sheets of paper? Just bring the ones you have. They'll bring more now. Just sheets of paper and four pens. Okay. So, we're going to do... A, how long have you been married? Five years plus. Ah, he's a bros. Eh? Nine months. They should have the answer. The nine months people should have the answer. I don't know. Okay, so the question is this. First, the first thing you are going to do, write me on top of your, I hope you can write. You need some support to write or you can write. Please, they need, sorry, we are going to disturb you a bit. They need jotters or something to put it up so that they can write a bit easier. Just to us. Please remember who you're taking it from so that you return. All right. So the first thing you do. All right. Um, quickly. What are you going to write? Write me on top. Write me on top. Just write me as the heading of your own. Me. Or husband, if you're a husband, if you're a wife, right wife. So that it be easier for us. So if you're a wife, right wife. If you're a husband, right husband. Okay, so underline it. The first thing you're going to do for me is, if you receive 50 million naira now, if you receive 50 million naira, what are the things you're going to do with it? Three things. Top three things you're going to do. Top three things. If it's more than three, put more than three. But yeah. And you have just two minutes to do it. Too. Yeah. If you receive 50, all of everybody, if you receive 50 million, Right now, what will you do with it? <laughs> Somebody say, I'll buy suya. I'll just go and buy 5K suya first. <laughs> 500K for suya. With cold malt, chilled malt. To think of what I'll do with the remaining 445 million. <laughs> All right. All right, it shouldn't take you long now. All right, on the line. Okay, have you done so? Do you think you're done? Are you done? Are you done? So, on the line under that thing, right, on, on, right under it. Okay, I don't want to add anything, that's why I'm... So, on the line, right under it. No, don't give any space. Okay. So, now, write wife. So, what's your wife's name? Rhoda. So, write Rhoda now as the next title, under it. Just give some space. 
wrote that next time. You write your wife's name. You write your husband's name. So now, if your spouse receives 50 million, what will they do with it? I if your spouse receives 50 like million, he eh? he's not dead, like the I nine know. months only, you couldn't get family issues. Yeah, Wait, and they try so. <laughs> <laughs> right, what would she do with it? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, are you going to check that? Oh, no, I'll check this. Oh, you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we do this exercise so that we'll know. I don't want to give them, so let them finish writing first. If I say what I'm saying. Okay. So are you? Ah, this one, guys, one is long. Are you done now? Are you done, guys? Okay. So we do this exercise to know couples that are talking, couples that are planning, couples that are agreeing together. That's what this exercise is about. Because many couples live together, and they never plan, they never talk, they never pray together, they don't plan together. So we want to make sure you are talking. Ah, you are writing something. <laughs> You just remember something now. Yes, do pens up. <laughs> pens up, please. All right, so can you submit? So let's start from the ladies. Don't write anything submit. again. Give, yes. So we'll check. Okay, guys, you can give me your own. Oh, my God. Okay. So. <laughs> hmm. So these are the two guys. Where is them? Um, so who is Kelechi? Who is Kelechi? So your wife's name is what? Lauren. Lauren. Okay, so that's. Yeah. Okay, so these two. Okay, so. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so who should we start with? Should we start from youngest to oldest? Oldest to youngest. Oldest to youngest. If the oldest fail, the youngest will not be getting panic. Youngest, Abby. Yes, they are junior. Okay, so youngest. Youngest is Rhoda and What's your name? Boiga. Boiga, yes. yes. Okay. So Boiga says if he gets fifty million, he will tithe. He will Does he attend this church? I don't know. But that tithe is important. Hey, Boiga. Say we tithe. So we're seventy five million. Ah. Church Amen. He will give out some and he will start his clinic. Oh, okay. Your wife said. Your wife said. You will open a clinic. Oh. <laughs> she says. You will buy a house. She says. You will go on vacation. So you are not going to tight, sir. But all these things are 50 so million. I think the first thing he will buy is gone. <laughs> to get the remaining money for these things. Because only 50 million will open clinic, buy a house, and go on vacation. Now gone, okay. you go first buy. So, <laughs> so Rhoda, okay, so he says, hmm. So if Rhoda gets 50 Rhoda million. Rhoda says when she gets 50 million, she will go for her PhD. She will buy a house ah. and she will go for vacation. Ah. So it's obvious that she wants to go for vacation. Wait, guys, she wants to go for vacation. It's so obvious that, it. that it's obvious that she wrote what she wants, not what he what she thinks is what she wants him to do <laughs> yeah. with the fifty million that she wrote. Okay, he says she would tight. She's not going to tight. She She's not planning to tight. The two times she don't mention title. <laughs> He says she will tight, she will give her, she will start a business, a mall. So you're not listening to her. Uh -huh, you're not listening well. She wants to go for a PhD. Right? And vacation. <laughs> vacation. <laughs> and she doesn't want to pay rent again. She wants a house. house. So, obviously, uh -huh. you're not listening. Clap for them. Clap, clap for them. them. Clap for them. <laughs> Take your evidence. Pay your title. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, so Lauren and Kelechi. Mm -hmm. Kelechi says he will buy a house, he will take his family for holiday, mm. and he will buy shares. Mm. 
These things are so funny, you know why? Because wives have planned the family without talking to them. <laughs> so she says that he will buy a car. <laughs> and she says you will invest in a business. And she also thinks you will relocate with the family. <laughs> However, on the other hand, he said, okay, so she said, um, that she will invest in property, she will relocate with her family. Okay, so that one, they don't and she plan will establish that one. a business. He said she will relocate. <laughs> that relocate is sure. Yes, very sure. She will acquire more certificates and she will go shopping. Rhoda. No, it's Lauren. Lauren, Jerry. Yeah, Lauren. So obviously. He knows that she wants to relocate. I'm telling you. But apparently, this is talk about it today. <laughs> apparently, she's not. She, she, I mean, the things, everything he's, he wants, she didn't write anything. What are the things he wants? Buy a house, mm -hmm. take his family for holiday. Day, not to relocate. Not to relocate. <laughs> and buy shares. But if their passport lost, they will just stay. <laughs> but what did she think she, he she would do? She wants him to buy a car. She wants him to invest in a business and she wants him to relocate. I will go buy a car, do business, then relocate. It doesn't work together. So, no, so you relocate, <laughs> do business the, there, and buy, and the, buy car. the car there. Wow. Can we clap for them? All right. <laughs> Thank you. That's good, Abby. Thank you, guys. God bless you. God bless you. Let me shake your hands. You are blessed. Your dreams will come to pass. Amen. Your dreams will come to pass. Amen. In Jesus' name. Please help me appreciate them. Let me appreciate them. Let me appreciate them. But this exercise, as simple as it looks, yes. is very important yes. because these are the things that cause problems in marriage. Yes. So two people are working together, but they are not really working together yes. because they don't know each other's dreams. Dreams. So yes. you are making money with the plan to relocate. Your husband is making money with the plan to settle here. Those are the things that cause problems in marriage. Yes. So the reason why we do these exercises is to get you to talk to each other. It's very important that you talk to each other. You know what each person's dreams are. You must agree. Yes. If you don't agree, the dreams will not come to pass as quickly as you want them to. So one person wants to relocate, the other person wants to stay here. So your angel is coming with answer. Which answer should he answer? Yes. And the Bible is clear, what two shall agree upon is what shall be established. So you are, you are literally not maximizing the power of agreement. your agreement if both of you are not on the same page. So it's something every couple should do from time to time. Say, so if we get 100 million, what are we going to do? You should know it. You know, because who knows? God can open the door yeah. and that money will come and even more than that. All right, very, very important that you communicate, agree together, pray together. All right, we're going to ask everybody their own questions. So everybody that is single or married, these are questions you should answer. So are you guys ready? Okay. So I need you to ask yourself these questions yes. because... Just answer for yourself. Yeah, just answer it. for yourself. Even if you are not in a relationship, if you are in a relationship, answer if you are not. Still answer um, with the consciousness of one day I'll be in a relationship and this is what I would expect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one, Two things you do when money is given to you. Top, no, top three things, sorry. Top, top three, three things you things do, you you do you when money is given to you. Once you receive money, what do you do? Top mm. three things. Don't, don't write what you don't do or what you do. So you shouldn't be thinking about it. When somebody gives money, what do you do? Mm -hmm. There's no right or wrong answer yet. So yes. just write what you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two. Should I go ahead? Okay. Number two. Who does the money belong to in a marriage? Husband or wife or both of you? <laughs> it's a wife. <laughs> in a home, who should determine how the money is spent. And if you're already married, who determines how the money is spent in your family? Okay, next one. If for any reason the other party's income stops, what would you do for that person? Number one, would you give them money? Would you wait to be asked would you spend your own together or you would just give them a monthly allowance? 
Okay. So if for any reason, the person you are married to or the person you are in a relationship with, the person loses their income, their income stops, they lose their job, something happens, their business, whatever, folds up. What would you do? So would you give them a monthly allowance? Would you just spend your money together? Would you wait for them to ask you when they have the need? Or would you just be giving them money randomly? Should I go on? If you are married or you are in a relationship, what's your view on how your partner spends money? If you are already married or you are in a relationship, how does your partner spend money? What's your view on how your partner spends money? Are they good with money? Are they bad with money? Are they reckless? Are they savers? Are they... Please be object. Tell yourself the truth. Nobody's going to look at these things. Tell yourself the truth. It's very important that you face the truth at this stage. Okay? If you are married or you are in a relationship, who is more financially prudent? Who is better with money? <laughs> Say the truth. Who is better with money? If you are in a relationship, who pays the bills now? When you go out on a date, who pays the bills? Okay. And when you get married, who should pay them? Okay. When you, when you are to give away money, especially for married people, who decides? Who decides where the money should be given, how much the money should be, and to whom the money should be given? So, for instance, if you have maybe a family member who wants money, who decides? Or if there's a project in church, who decides? Do you do it together, or does one person decide? Final question. Do you want to have a joint account... Okay, this one, we should take votes for this one. <laughs> okay, so please, this one, I want a vote. I want to see your hands. If you want... Sound. Sound. But it's going, it keeps going off. Hello, all right. Has has is off too. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. So please, we want to take a vote. Yeah. If if whether you are single or married. Yes. If if you're already practicing or not, just let just put up your hand. If we ask a question. Do you, if you if you will have a joint account or you want to have a joint account? Can I see your hand? With your partner, you want to have a joint account. If you want to have a joint account with your partner. Don't lie, you. God is in your hand. Not that tomorrow now you change mouths. Okay. If you don't want to have a joint account with your partner, can I see? Okay, if you don't want, you don't want to have a joint account. Okay. So can we, can we do a quick... Yes. Yes. So can I have two people that want joint account and two people that don't want? Yes, and you can... Please volunteer yourself. You can so give us the reason. Please. Just volunteer yourself. One male, one female. Okay, if possible. One male, one female. Which one are you? Which one are you? Joints. Which one are you? You don't no, want joints. joints. Come. Joints, please come. What are you? Joints. You are not. Okay, so joints, come. So I need one guy who is... Who doesn't want a joint account as a man? A man, you don't want joint account. Please want. come come and say, present your case now. Don't be afraid. You don't want. Fantastic. Thank you. Please come. We're not, are we complete now? Yes. Yes. No. Yes, we are. One more female. Look you are what? This joint. You, you are what? This, you are joint. Joint stand like this. This joint stand like this. Jo it's this joint too. This joint stand there. Okay, so follow, take her. Two <laughs> of you, you fit yourself. You. What's this joint? <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> All right. Okay. 
So just mind yourself, since both of you don't want to join the account. Ah, okay. do we need mic for them to debate, please. Mic. Let them use our mics. Ah. So that will be faster, yes. So okay, in so one in just in one minute. Short why do you sharp. think? Why don't you want? Okay. Why do I want? There is a reason. I don't want because example if I'm married to a man that does not know how me say that money being fixed in that account is for the kids. Um, expenses, and I know that when he's broke, he might go there and pick that money. I don't want that. Let's clap, let's clap, let's appreciate them. Let's take one person on this okay. side. So, why do you want a joint account? I think the one house, guys, the basic reason to have a joint account is to enable me to secure the future for me, my wife, and my children. Okay. Yeah. In what way? Don't do a Joro. In what way? <laughs> okay. When when we say joint accounts, uh -huh. we're not we're not having a joint account to spend money from there. Okay. We are saving money oh. for critical issues. Okay. okay. So you don't want um, you don't want to save for critical issues. Let, <laughs> you don't want to save don't for worry, critical issues. I'm, I'm joking. It's just joking. I'm no. joking. No. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm the kind of person that... Um, One house, guys, so that I can hear what they're saying. I love doing things on my own. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let um, him land now. That, um, and when it comes to money, um, should I say um, I'm very, very... I'm careful. I don't just spend any hour. So I'd rather have my own money myself, right? Than to have a joint account where I know, okay, if I don't want something to be done, I know it's not really necessary at that point in time. I don't want an issue with my partner. I believe that if I have my own money, it's not monitored in a way I can surprise my wife at any time. I that is just my mindset. Don't complain, his wife is not complaining. Don't worry now. That's okay. His wife is not complaining. <laughs> All right, good one. Okay. Okay, I actually support having a joint account. I think, I believe it helps cohesion. It helps planning. It helps transparency. And it's a check on both of them. So, I'm not, having a joint account doesn't mean you will not have your personal accounts. I mean, you have salary accounts. We already have accounts as single people. But this joint account, it brings for me a sense of uniformity. And I really appreciate it. Okay. Uh. So just to clarify, this joint account you are talking about is only savings for saving. It's not necessarily for me. You want I'm, everything together. Uh, did not just for saving. We have projects. You can decide to carry yes, out projects from together. the family and it will be from the joint account. Okay. So everybody will bring their money share. Everybody, yes. will, everybody will have a portion they put in it. And again, um, you can't just talk about spending carelessly for you because I know that an account, a joint account, there are signatories and the couple are signatories. So nobody takes out money without the check of the other person. Thank you. All right. Can we put our hands together for them, please? I appreciate them. I appreciate them. Praise God. Are you done? Yes, sir. Are you sure? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can't hear you. Praise the Lord. All right. We're intentionally... Let's leave the debate. We're done with the debate for now. We're, we're intentionally doing this class like this so that you can see how people actually think. A lot of times we just teach and we assume people are listening or are agreeing. Meanwhile, they have their own mindsets. If you notice, um, the lady that was wearing brown, that was not for joint, she has already calculated her husband's behavior. Yes. I wanted to ask her, are you married? Have you met this man already? Have you, have you met the man already? He's already behaving badly, except, except you have met him already. But if you have not met him already, um, it's not nice to have already planned what he's going to do. <laughs> Praise God. I'm, I'm also concerned about the fact that... Yeah. Is he working now? Yes. All right. Okay. I'm also concerned about the fact that you are okay with knowing that somebody has very bad financial habits and you want to still go ahead. You know, that's a big concern for me. 
you know. So it's, for me, it's still not even about money. It's about your mindset. And that's the real problem with money in marriage. A lot of people have funny mindsets exactly. about marriage. Mm. So you've already planned yourself that I will manage, so far, a man, I could just manage him. Mm -hmm. If he has bad, I will protect myself. Why go into something that is going to be a problem tomorrow? Why don't you pick well from the beginning? So she's already made that adjustment in her head that this guy may have a bad spending habit. So I don't even want to go there with him. So you've already divided yourself. Hmm. So we're, what we're going to do in this evening service is to just look at some mindsets that we need to work on. All right? Believing God that this will prepare you for where you are going into. So number one, first thing you need to all have as a mindset as regards love and money is that God is my source. Come on, say that with me. God is my source very important. One of the things that brings tension financially in a marriage is when one person is associating the provision of their life to a human being instead of to God. God is your source. The only person that promised to meet all your needs <laughs> is God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yeah. You must remove your eyes from any man or any woman and put your eyes on God. God is your source. Don't marry someone because you think they are the key to your financial breakthrough. I'm telling you, it's a very sneaky mindset. Pastor, I didn't know, you know, when they talk about the seven capital sins or the seven deadly sins, laziness is one of those mentioned there. And I used to think, how are you people putting, we're talking about sexual immorality, we're talking about killing mother, we're talking about greed, you people are bringing laziness into it. Why is laziness here? Until many years, I began to see the lifestyle in human beings. One of the things that we are most successful to is laziness. Most people would like to earn money without working for it. The average person who wants to pass exam without staying up to read. He wants to get answered prayer without learning to pray or knowing God. Let somebody just pray for him. I want to shout amen. We are looking for the... This is why betting is selling. Because you just want to do minimal work and get maximum flex or maximum cruise. It doesn't work like that. Laziness is a sin. There is nobody that is your source except God. And the Bible said the same God is rich unto all that calls upon him. Is somebody get what I'm saying? DJ, give us Romans chapter... Um, <laughs> I call the book... <laughs> I call the book that put scripture for me, DJ. Romans chapter 10, verse 12. Romans 10, 12. You have it on the screen. Quick, put it. So, so God is your source. Not that man, not that woman. Don't marry anybody with the mindset... That they will rescue you from poverty. I always see girls. Sometimes guys, they say things like, I never marry a poor person. Look at it here. He said, for there is no difference between what? The Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is what? Reach unto what? All oh, that. God, that means God is able to make every one of us here rich. You don't have to say, I must marry a rich man. That, that mentality and mindset is saying that you are a poor man. And you need a rich man. There's nothing stopping you from being rich. Every time I counsel ladies, especially guys too, have that mindset. When I counsel ladies that tell me, I must marry a man that is rich. I said, no. What you need to say is that you want to be rich. Don't misconstrue it with you want to marry a rich man. If you think you want to marry a rich man, you are assuming that he will share his money with you. You are assuming he will be generous. There are many rich men that are wicked. There are many rich men that yes, at the beginning when they are wooing you, they are buying you car, buying you everything. At some point, they will just say, I'm not giving you my money again. Some of them will just hide their bag and walk away. Some of them will divorce you. So what will happen at that time? There are many people today that marry the rich man and they are homeless because the man has left them. What if the man even dies? God forbid. But what if anything can happen? So you can't just sit down and say your dream is to marry a rich man. Did that same God that made them rich can also make you rich? What you really want is that you want to be rich. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So you must eliminate that mindset. People that marry because of the mindset of I want to marry somebody rich, the moment they start getting their own money, they find that they don't really like this person. Don't marry someone because they paid your school fees. School fees is not dowry. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I've seen these things. Sometimes it's even men. There's one particular guy I know like that. He's in his third marriage or so. And it's money that made him marry all the people he married. Married the first one. When he started, see, if you marry somebody that's a millionaire, the day God starts blessing you and you become a millionaire, you find out that you don't actually find that person attractive. It was their money you like. Now you have money. And you find out, I don't want to live with this person. So he jumped from the first marriage. The moment the money she was making was no more big money to him. 
or he lo or she loses her income. Then the married on that one too that promised big money. When the money finished too, he left. He has been jumping like that. It's a trap. Either that person will, can lose their income or you can even get to the stage where you start making money. You now find that you are stuck for life with somebody you don't like just because they had money. See, money that is big to you today will not be big to you in 10 years' time. I'm told that's, why, that's why we're here this weekend. I want to enlarge your mind. Money that is 10 million, that's why we use 50 million. A time will come in your life. 50 million will be something you write in one check and give us a seat. Oh, there are not many people in that room here. A time is going to come, your tithe, you will pay tithe of 50 million. I'm telling you, sir. I'm telling you, sir. So, get to that stage where you don't see money as your God. Let God be God in your life. Abraham, when he was coming back from the war, they wanted to offer him all the riches of the war. He said, I will not touch even a shoelace from this money. He said, lest you say you are the one that made Abraham rich. He was so sure of his covenant with God. Listen, there's a covenant of prosperity on your life. Whether you are male or female, whether you are young or old, God, you and God, if you are, especially if you are a born again Christian, you and God have a covenant of prosperity. There's no need for you to subject yourself to marrying somebody you don't like because they are rich. You too can be rich. Oh, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. That's why we're here to release this weekend. Whether you are male or female, you'll be controlling millions and billions in the name of Jesus. So, number one, God is your source. Stop beefing your partner. Stop hating somebody that didn't load your phone. Stop hating somebody that didn't buy pay for your Uber. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? God is your source. Say it with me, God is my source. God is my source. All right, so that's the first thing, first mindset you must have. All right, my husband is not my source. My wife is not my source. My father is not my source. My mother is not my source. Because they are people that even enter marriage and they're still expecting their parents to take care of them. God is your source. And this God is rich. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I said this God is what? Rich. There's nothing too hard for him to do. Trust me, Nigeria's economy does not weaken him. Oh, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. You can be a multi-billionaire if you are ready. Because from his own end, he's ready. He said, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he added no sorrow. You don't have to sweat for it. You don't have to inconvenience your life for it. You will prosper cheaply. Are you getting what I'm saying? Tomorrow I'll talk about the first millionaire that was raised in our ministry. was a student. And he was a multi-millionaire. So don't see, there's nothing stop you. Even being a student doesn't stop you. Don't say, I'm just in uni, I'm University of Abuja. Look, you God can prosper you there. The covenant of prosperity is not a respect of your location. Oh, I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. So why would you say, I can't marry a man that, I can't marry a man that is not rich? You're already belittling yourself. You're already thinking that they're going to acquire you like a piece of furniture. Look, ladies, when you are coming, you're going to bring something when you are coming. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I'm praying for you, the young ladies here. You will not marry in a generation where they will be telling you, you will leave my house today. Yeah. Or where they will be telling you things like, eh, I will not pay your transport. Or I will seize your car key. Because they are the one that bought the car for you. Some of those ladies you see that they buy Range Rovers for, they give them long range slap inside the Range Rover. There are many women that are staying in marriages they should not stay in. Because if they leave, they can't even eat. They can't afford to. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So, number one, God is my source. All right. Okay, <laughs> number two, every human being must work. God is not a magician. God is never going to throw money from heaven for you. God expects that you will work and that he will bless the work of your hands. So when he made man, the Bible says he made mankind. That word man is not just male man. He's male man and female man. And he blessed both of them. And he told them to multiply, he told them to fill the earth, and he told them to take dominion. He expected both of them to walk with the blessing that has been released on them. So these days, it's very sad for me when I see people, just because they want to get married, you know, they just shut down their lives, shut down their dreams, I'm getting married. I remember when I was living, I, was living, I lived in Portaco for about a year and a half, about two years. And I remember one day, so there was one girl that came to our office, and so a couple of people were talking about her. And so I just walked in, you know, and then I said, oh, really, what does she do? They say she get, what? She get boyfriend. <laughs> I was confused. I said, she get boyfriend. Eh, boyfriend at work. They say, ah, 
Lydia, she has cash, she has house, she has everything paid for by this guy. And this is somebody that ordinarily would have been able to bring something to the table. Once that relationship was over, the guy collected everything he bought. Yes. It's his own. Who pays for something is his own. Eh, it's his own. He paid for it. So at this stage, if you are going to enter into a relationship but you're already married, you must understand that every human being, as far as you are an adult, as far as you are a living being, you are expected to work. In fact, the Bible is so clear on it that 2 Thessalonians 3.10, the personal translation says, for when we were with you, we instructed you with these words. It says, anyone who does not want to work for a living should go hungry. He says, if you will not work, don't eat. Don't come into marriage with the mindset that somebody else is going to pay all my bills and me, I'm just going to relax. When you are coming into marriage, you are expected to bring something to the table. You're not expecting for a man, and women especially are guilty of this. I hear so many women say, don't worry, my Boaz is coming. And my question is, you're expecting a Boaz, are you a root? <laughs> a lot of times, when we tell the story of Ruth and Boaz, most people focus on the fact that, oh, she went to him, she went to lay, lay at his feet, you know, they almost make it seem as if, oh, women should propose. That's not the focus of that story. How did they meet? Did he meet her twerking? He met her working. She was busy. And she was working so hard that he passed by and said, who's that young girl? Who does she belong to? Those were his exact words. His former now said, oh, she's the, the girl that came back with um, Naomi and all of that. And so he, he greeted her. And you see, the interesting thing was, he greeted her and told her, oh, we have heard so many great things about you. May the Lord give you a full reward. He, he blessed her. And then he said to her, don't worry. I've told them, if you need to keep working with us, keep working here. She kept on working. Then when it was lunchtime, he took her on a date. Go and read that story. He took her on a date. The MD took her on a date. And after that, the Bible says she went back to work. She didn't now decide I've, I've arrived. MD is now toasting me when for lunch the other day. And we had some business discussions. No, she went right back to work. So as a woman, don't feel entitled. I see too many young girls entitled. The argument they were having the other day that they started dragging themselves on social media, not me, was that I said that if a woman asks you for transport money, you shouldn't marry her. Why would you be planning to go on a date with someone you are planning to enjoy his company as well. And he should pay your transport money. Which presupposes that you are poor. Because I'm assuming that you are also driving down to wherever you are meeting with your car. These are the mindsets that keep women small. You just think that a man will marry you and acquire you as property. As, as Pastor always says, people, there's a way men treat property. How many men today when you were going out, did you tell your chair, I'm coming? Did you, tell, did you tell your door, take care of yourself, I'll be back soon, okay? If you are furniture, you'll be treated like furniture. If a man acquires you like furniture, you'll be treated like furniture. You can't pay your own bills. You can't load your phone. You can't pay for your Uber. This, I'm so, I'm, this generation, my heart bleeds for you because most people in this generation don't even know anything about Vex money. When I was growing up and I was dating, vex money, you hold your money in your pocket so that when you get there, you order with your full chest what you want to eat. And if the man cannot pay, you tell him, don't worry. I just came to have fun. I will pay. But these days, you wait for him to order Uber for you. If he does not order Uber for you, then you get there. You are now shaking to order. You are hungry, oh, but you are not sure what he can pay and what he cannot pay. Those days, if a man tells you, okay, we finished dinner, let me take you to my house. You tell him, get out of here. And you order your Uber, or you bring your car key and be going home. But these days, you are at his mercy. Because if he says, let me take you to my house, you say, <laughs> because you can't go home. You can't go home. So as a woman and as a human being, every human being is expected to work. Because both of us...
of us are supposed to bring what we have to the table to work together to build our future, raise our children, build our dreams together. It's not supposed to be one-sided. Even though God is our source, but you must also be a willing channel. Mm. <laughs> third mindset. Third mindset you must correct. That's the mindset that men should provide in the family. That's a very common one, but it is not biblical. It's not scriptural. What has happened, what you, you need to understand the history and the the background of that concept that men should be the main provider in the house. It is cultural, but it's not scriptural. All right? It's a cultural concept. It was never designed by God. And there's a reason why. In those days, they were, they were, they were trying to work on Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 says, husbands love your wife, and you wife submit and respect your husband. So what they wanted to do, they were manually making sure Ephesians 5 happens. If a, so usually, if you notice, most men those days married, they were way older than their, their wives. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Most times, if you check your parents, you find out that there's a significant age gap between father and, um, your father and your mother. Now, those things help respect to happen naturally because this man would have advanced in life. So most likely, he would have been settled in his career or field. All right? He'll be in a position to take care of his wife. And the wife will be in a position to respect him. So they are manually making sure that the respect and love thing is happening. Now, unfortunately for us, we are carrying that cultural mindset. But today, men and women don't have that age gap. Men and women, well, women can even get a job first before the person she wants to marry. And a better job. A better job, Seth. Sometimes both of you can be working and the, man's, uh, the woman's tight is the man's whole salary. salary. Yes. So this is why if you look at those countries where women have equality and all that, marriages are crashed there easily. Because this cultural mindset cannot survive in 21st century. It's because we're building on something that was never God's design. God never said anywhere in scripture that the man must be the main provider. The main scripture people quote to try and push that idea is from First Timothy where it says, he that does not provide for his house is worse than an infidel. That was never what God was saying. So we're going to look at it. DJ, please give me First Timothy chapter 5. So let's look at it. You must always read scripture. Read words before the verse. Read words after the verse. Never pick a scripture out of context. All right? If you pick any scripture out of context, you know, you become a con. All right. First Timothy chapter 5 from verse 1. DJ, I need to move in as fast as possible. Is that possible? Because we're going to read down to a couple of verses. So, what was happening here, you know, Timothy was a young pastor. I mean, if you know the story, Timothy was a young pastor. Apostle Paul was his father in the Lord. So, Timothy was pastoring a young church. Apostle Paul was coaching him on how to pastor. So, this was Paul coaching Timothy on how to run a church. So, see what he says. He said, rebuke not what? An elder. So, he was telling Timothy, look, when an elder misbehaves, don't just rebuke him anyhow. He said, but instead, entreat him as what? A father. He was teaching him how to run church. He said, and the younger men treat them as your what? Brothers. Brethren, next verse. He said, the elder women treat as what? Mothers. And the young girls treat as, treat with as what? Sisters with all what? Purity. Yes. Timothy was very young, probably not married here. Very young guy. So he said, you have to be careful how you deal with sisters. See the next thing. He said, honor what? Widows. He was teaching church administration. So verse 3, we started talking about who? Widows. I can't hear. Who are we talking about by verse 3? Widows. widows. Say, honor widows that are widows what? Indeed. So who are we talking about? Widows. I can't hear. You're not sure. Who are we talking about now? Yes. You know, we started with men, elder men, we started with younger men, elder women, younger women. Abi, from verse 3, we entered what? Widows. widows. So, verse 4. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite parents, for that is good and all that. Who are we still talking about in verse 4? Widows. I can't hear you guys. Who are we talking about in verse 4? Widows. See verse 5. Now, she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusted in God, and continues to pray at night. Who are we still discussing here? Verse 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Who are we talking about here? Widows. Verse 7. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. Who are we talking about here? Widows. If you are not sure, you will see verse, uh, next verse. But, uh, have, we, have we done verse 7? Yes. Okay, so see verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, especially those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than what? So stop here, stop here. Now, the assumption many people have is that this is talking about marriage. If you notice, we've been talking about widows since. Am I correct? How do we jump from widows to marriage? This is not marriage. And if you notice, they didn't even say husband. They say if any. 
So take note of that. I'm going to explain. They say if any doesn't provide for his own. So let me explain and we'll continue. What was happening was that they had a lot of widows. In those days, when you were a Christian, you were kind of isolated from the community. If you know if, you know, if you've read Acts of the Apostles and all that, you see that they used to kill them. They used to share food in church. All right? It wasn't offering they were using to share food. It was everybody bringing food from their own house and we share it to everybody. Many people think it's offering that way. No, it wasn't offering on time. Everybody was bringing food because we were kind of isolated. We were like a, a, a endangered people. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So, um, they had widows there and church was taking care of the widows and the church couldn't continue taking care of all the widows. So it was coming too cumbersome. So Paul said, you know what you're going to do? Tell people that have relatives that are widows. If you, if whether you're a male or female, if you have a relative that is a widow, you take care of that widow. So that the church can take care of all the widows that nobody is taking care of. That was the problem. So let's continue. So not, not verse 8, we'll come back to it. See verse 9. Let not what? The so verse 8 was about who? We we have not left the topic of widows. Never left it. Nothing about marriage in that verse at all. Verse 9 says, let not the widow be taken to the number under three score years. Three score is 60. So if somebody is young, if somebody is not, if somebody younger than 60, they shouldn't even become called a widow. They should go and work. Or they should go and remarry. He said, um, having been the wife of one man, he says, um, well reported for good works. They're just saying, if, if she's younger than 60, she shouldn't come and sit down for us to take care of her. She should go and continue her life. Life is still on. You know? Say, so report of good works and all that. If she had lost strangers, if she has washed strangers' feet, if she leaves strangers and all that, all that. Next verse. He says, um, but the younger widows, who are we seeing? What's the topic? Widows. We're still on widows. We've never left the issue of widows. But the younger widows refuse them. For when they have begun to was one quantity against Christ, they will still what? Marry. That means let them go and live their life. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. Next verse. It says, and when and without they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and, and not be idle and tatlas and other. Who are we talking about here? Widows. Next verse. It says, uh, I will therefore that the younger women, who are we talking about here? Widows. The younger women, they should bear children, bear children guide their house. Not a question of advice to speak or others that. Go to next verse. For some are already turned aside after Satan. Next verse. If any man or what? Woman. This is the expansion of verse 8 that we read. They expanded again in verse 16. If any man or woman that believeth that is born again have what? Widows. Who are we talking about, guys? Widows. If any man or woman have widows, let them do what? Relieve them. And let not the church be what? Charged. That it may relieve them that are widows. In the, this is an expansion of verse 8. Saying, if you have a widow, please take care of the widow. That's what verse 8 was saying. There's nowhere it connects to marriage. So there's nowhere in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible that God says the man should be the provider. Nowhere. Now, it doesn't mean the man should be irresponsible. That's not what I'm saying at all. The point is that... Please repeat that, sir. Yes, it doesn't mean the man should be irresponsible. Because we'll get there. Because some men will say, ah, oh, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> If you go to, you see, a woman, if a woman is under her parents and they are taking care of her and you want to go and marry her, you are, what you are telling the parents is that from now on, I will take care of her. I'm on, I care of her. That's what we are signing for. So I'm not in any way saying a man should not, not be responsible at all. But I'm saying don't come with the mindset. You see, that's why women have been maltreated for years. Because both the parents and the husband and everybody, they are treating them like a, like a commodity that we are shipping off to another person. So anything you see there, be, let the man be controlling. No. It's high time we marry women and know that this is my partner, not my footstool. If somebody get what I'm saying, if they acquire you like furniture, they will treat you like furniture. And that's what has been going on for years. Women are not handicapped. You see, this mindset is what makes women not to be productive. Most women have the capacity to make more money than men. But because they've told them a man must provide, they bend their hand like this and they come. So now you go buy, give me transport. When that thing was trending, I was so ashamed for my country. It's only in Nigeria those things can trend. My gender. Because a abroad, if a woman is even going on a date with you, she's not assuming oh you will gosh. pay. You guys will share the money. Yes. That's the assumption. She's not going to assume you're going to pay for the date. It's only in Africa. And you see, when you, when you come on a date with that mindset that they will pay, that's why you will feel the need to offer your body. Because they paid for food. You, what do I have to offer? <laughs> you will pull your cloth. That's the only thing you have to offer. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Because most guys, if they are paying for things like that, in their mind, they assume you are going to sleep in their house this night. It's the assumption. It's the, it, this is what women have presented themselves to be as commodities and items that men can use. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So, don't package yourself, but there's nowhere they say you as a woman. See, go and read Proverbs 31. Can that kind of woman, can they be giving her transport? 
Go and read. That, that woman was in all kinds of business. She was a business mogul. She was in real estate business. She was in um, um, fashion business. She was in food business, agriculture. She was, in logistics. she was logistics. She was in all kinds of business. Shipping and all that, importation, exportation. So imagine how rich she was. The person that wrote this book, seven things I balance on tell me, because there's a chapter here, make your own money. I told you, man. There's a chapter here. The woman that wrote it is Florence Shalakija. Many young girls don't even know her. They know people that twerk, but they don't know Florence Shalakija. She's the richest black woman in Africa, and she almost the world self. So imagine if, if, if you had that, if you had that. There are many women like that that could have been doing great things, but they just think, oh, my own job is to stay in the kitchen. No, some of you are graced to make billions and millions. Don't let anybody just keep you in one corner as an item. Is somebody get what I'm saying? All right, so there's nowhere they said the man alone should provide. You must always work as partners. And listen, ladies, men respect you different when you make your own money. I can tell you for a fact. Yes. Men respect you different. In our parents' time, any small thing they'll tell you, man, you pack out of my house today. If two of us buy the house, if you invest, you go on that room, I go on that room. Go. Nobody's packing out. And somebody get one. If, if two of us are angry, we travel. Yeah, and have if two of us angry, we travel abroad. And we both leave the house. Yeah. It's not that one person. We say you are packing our house, and they will not call your uncle to come and beg for you to enter the house the because you are a piece of furniture. They gather your load into a box. I'm yes. just imagining if they want to move yes. me out of my house now. Bon, do you it will be easier for him to move out. Yes, that one. <laughs> yes. I'm just a man. Thinking. Yes, a man respects you differently when you are a woman of substance. When he, there's a way he can't talk to you. He can't say, I won't give you chop money. You know the way you can threaten with that? That for now, since you are rude to me, come and see where you get money. All the ladies know, may you never be in those kind of situations. Amen. May you not be that kind of woman that they will threaten with chewing gum. That won't buy you chicken. You must be so blessed by yourself that you can, you can buy your own things. You can go on vacation by yourself. Not that somebody is taking you to Dubai to sleep with you. You can pay. Is somebody get what I'm saying? And go by yourself. So that mindset that women have has many women that could have done business. One lady told us that her perfume business is no longer moving, so she wants to marry. I don't know if you understand. <laughs> because marriage is on that form of business. As this business is not moving, make her just marry. Go and check those people that marry a man and they are not doing anything. Go and check how the dynamics works out in the long run. You know I'm a counselor, so I'm giving you the gist. At the beginning, it looks like the man is spending, buying him, buying her car, buying her clothes. Many years after, when the emotional, emotional distance has died, the man is now looking at the practicality of you, your wisdom, your sense. And many women suffer. As the years go, the man is no more giving money. So the woman, the woman is married to a rich man, but she doesn't have money. She can't buy things. Because the man is now married. Those men, if you don't marry second wife, what will you say? You can't even argue because you, have, you can't even pay rent. You can't move out. So go and check most of those marriages where the man is super rich and the woman is super poor. At the beginning, it looks okay. Go and check five years, ten years, twenty years down the line. The man is misbehaving. The woman can't talk because she can't even eat if she shouts. She can't eat. Are you get what I'm saying? Ah, women, you make your own money in Jesus' name. <laughs> it's important. Mm. Okay, so the next one. Marriage, finances in marriage is not 50-50. It's not 50-50. It's not 50-50. In fact, marriage as a whole is not 50-50. The problem and the challenge when you come into marriage with the mindset that marriage is 50-50 is that after a while, you will become resentful. Because what God expected, okay, he said, it's not good for this man to be alone. I'll make him a helper. Then he went on to say, this man will leave his father and his mother, and he will cleave to his wife, and the two of them will become one. God expected that you will come as a whole person, and this person too will come as a whole person, and both of you will join together and become another one individual before God's eyes. Um, Pascal is going to talk about covenant in a bit. But there are days in marriage, okay? There are days. The Bible says that two are better than one for they have a good reward for their labor. And it says that sometimes when one is weak, the other will be able to pull him up. It says when one is cold, the other will be able to keep him warm. That's what the Bible says. So the Bible is trying to tell us that there will be days when I will not be at my max, max level of my 100%. If this person was only bringing 50 and I was bringing 50, then if my 50 falls short, it will affect the home. It will affect the marriage. 
But if I'm bringing 100 and it's bringing 100, if my 100 is not up to 100, we still have a 100 we're working with. So God's plan, ultimate plan in marriage, is that both of you will bring a 100. See, when it comes to sharing money, if you think about marriage as 50-50, that means that you're looking at marriage as a contract and not a covenant. That's usually the problem. Most people want, in fact, what people want today is not really marriage. It's not marriage. People just want, first of all, a ceremony so that they can change their name. An official ceremony so that my name can change, so that people can respect me. That's number one. Number two, people want to just have a legal way to be having sex. If you are born again, if you are born again, you just don't want them to look at you that you are a fornicator. So you just marry. But people don't want to do the actual work of marriage. So a few minutes ago, when we were asking those questions, the young gentleman over here said, he, he likes, there's a way he likes his things. He likes his things to be done. He likes, no, and, and I'm not trying to be insultive or anything. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just, these are just some of the mindsets. So we have people who will not mind being married, but they don't want to be husbands. So he wants a wife, but he doesn't want to be a husband. He wants, doesn't want to stop being a bachelor. So what people want to do is remain bachelors in a marriage, and that can happen. So once you come into a marriage, it means that every, you are bringing everything, assets, liabilities, what you like, what you don't like. You're going to come in and lay it all down, and I'll bring my own. The same way you two, you don't, there are things you don't like. There are things you don't like. And if all of us do, there are things we don't like. You won't have a marriage. So you can't say, oh, there's a way you want to spend your money. Mm -hmm. That totally negates the idea of marriage because marriage in itself is covenant. And I don't want to get into what Pascal is going to talk about, but the truth is that when it comes to marriage, God expects that everything you have, you bring it. Yeah. Everything he has, he brings it. it. And two of us no longer have individual things. Yeah. That's real marriage, Joe. I know there's Instagram marriage. Where we, we take pictures together, we do selfie, we look good. But the real work of marriage, we don't want to do it. If you want to have a real kingdom marriage, the way God planned it, God's plan is that you bring everything. And you surrender everything. And we work together. Together, not apart. Because you can't say, you would say, well, you want to have your own money. See, if you have your own money, the same way you want to surprise your wife, you can surprise her positively and negatively. Hmm. Because you can, when you have money that nobody's asking you what you are doing with it, you can use it to cheat. And she finds out she'll still be surprised, just that it won't be a pleasant surprise. <laughs> so sometimes, even having that money together, that putting everything together, being accountable together, helps us to keep accountability. I know what you're doing, I know what your thoughts are, I know what your plans are. Once you start separating money, mm. you start separating your lives. Mm. Once you start separating your lives, you don't have a marriage. Yeah. And it doesn't just end with mo money. I'm also talking about church. When people say things like, oh, I worship in this church, my wife worships in that church. It's only a matter of time. There will start being cracks in that marriage. So when it comes to marriage, you have to bring a 100%. When it comes to sharing money in marriage, it's not going to be about law. It's not about I bring this person. It's about love. It is love that will compel you. This woman, love will make you know that this woman has needs much more than... So Pascal always gives that example, and it's so true. I'm always fascinated when we're traveling. So when we're traveling, we pack two boxes. Let me rephrase that. I pack one and a half, and he gets the other half. Because we all know when he's traveling. One black shoe, one brown shoe. We just put it in. Mm -hmm. So now I start looking. My earrings... Uh, this color, my top is this color. I would need, I'm wearing three black outfits, but I need three different shoes for it. So I'm wearing blue, but I can't wear navy blue and royal blue. I can't wear turquoise and, I, so I have to mix it up. And then if I'm wearing stripes, I want white shoes that have black bow. And tomorrow if I'm wearing white, I want white shoes that don't have a bow. So you see, I'm going to pack at least seven shoes for his two shoes. Yeah. The same thing goes with when we are shopping. We can't share shopping money oh, equally. Yeah. Now, it's not about law. You know, if we say, oh, let's just do 50-50, yeah. you will give me the exact same money, but it's not going to work because my needs are more. 
<laughs> Pastor said, mm. <laughs> That one entered. <laughs> That one entered. Send me my honorarium later. <laughs> I just preached for your good. So it's never, it's, 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 it's more about generosity than responsibility. Sometimes, you know, just being kind towards the person yeah. that you love. Now I have to face you and preach. Being kind towards the person that you love. So many times when we're traveling, we don't share shopping money equally. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even shop on every trip. Even though when he does shop, it covers... Because the wristwatch is wearing can be like seven of my outfits. Do you understand? <laughs> well, so it's not every time. But that wisdom in knowing that, oh, we can't say because we brought 50-50, we must share 50-50. No. It's about love. I know what his needs are. There are times when he needs to buy an expensive wristwatch. And I just sit back and I'm happy to have my Apple wristwatch that I wear with every outfit. And I'm okay. There are times where he needs to buy a power bike. Needs. We buy it so that when I want to travel with my children, he, he will also respond to that need. So it's never going to be 50-50. There are times when you will have more needs than the other person. They can be emotional needs, they can be financial needs. There are times when you are even too in married. There are times you'll be too tired to pray. There are times, I'm telling you, if you just, for instance, if you just had a baby, if you just had a baby, you are exhausted. You don't, let me tell you, you want to pray, but you don't have power. I don't, the way all of you are very strong. Me, I was tired. <laughs> there were times I was really tired. And those days, all I wanted to do was just lie down and sleep. And in the sleep, I would hear somebody with his hand on my head. I would just say, Amen, Amen, Amen. I beg, I cannot keep myself, Amen. So imagine if I'm saying, if he says, Oh, we're bringing 50. I'm bringing 50. When, when, when it's your time to praise, no, it's 100, 100. When this person has need, when they fall, the other can lift him up. When you are cold, the other can keep you warm. <laughs> so, so remember, marriage is not what? 50-50. That's a transactional relationship. That's a business transaction. That's not love. Here, we do it more by love, not by law. Very important. It's by what? Love, not by. So it's about generosity, not what? Responsibility. So I see many couples say, You pay light, I pay this. You pay that. Once you start doing like, it's like I'm working with the business. Nobody falls in love with their business partner. Do you understand? You are not practicing the right thing. It's about generosity. It's about what can I? Because I see some couples, they are very strict though. You bring 30% of your money, you bring this person. It's very strict. And once the woman brings less, or whatever, they'll fight, or the man brings less. That's not what the atmosphere of a, of a loving home is supposed to be. It's about generosity. It's about, hey, how can I bless you? How can I do more for you? Is somebody getting what I'm saying? All right? So, like she said, when we go shopping, we don't, we don't share the same. We don't share money equally. When we're packing, we don't do anything equal. Nothing, nothing should be equally done. It should be based on generosity of both people. In fact, we should be struggling to give to each other. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So sometimes we just wake up and say, you need to change your shoes. I just write out some millions. Say, just go and buy shoes. For shoes. <laughs> I did that December last night. I just, said, I just transfer one money in millions. Say, ah, what's this for? I say, for shoes. Just go and buy shoes. I didn't buy any shoes. Yeah, doing well. But there's generosity. <laughs> Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's about generosity. We have run a joint account for many years. In fact, that, that's, that's taking me like... For many years. From the forever, first day of our forever. marriage. <laughs> For, for, from the beginning, we've always run a joint account. And that takes us to my next point about covenant. You know, uh, marriage is a covenant. So I'm, I'm saying this to say, even though we run a joint account, I'll get to that later. Um, now, after many years, I still allow her to have money she can use to do anything. Now, we run a joint account, so all my money is our money. But now, after many and it's not that she asked me, it's not that she's entitled, it's out of what? Generosity. Remember, that's the key. What two of you should be quarreling about in your home is who should do for who? Not who should receive from who? Yes. Somebody's getting what I'm saying. So, I, she has some accounts that she uses that so they paid some things into and I don't even bother her about it. Alright? And But all my own money is in our joint account. All. But I allow her to have some flexing money. It's not because I trust her. And instead of her flexing money, guess what? Most times, she still uses it to do things for me. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So that's what it's about. It's about generosity, not about law. We don't do it by law. We do it by love. Are you getting what I'm saying? So marriage is not 50-50. Once you start dividing things, challenge is about to come. Because once one person falls short, disrespect will come. 
You're supposed to bring 30 percent. You brought 28 percent. Quarrel will start. So that takes me to the next point. Marriage is a covenant. Marriage is a covenant. So Genesis chapter two, Genesis chapter two, verse twenty-four, popular scripture. DJ Genesis two twenty-four. Mm-hmm. He said, "Therefore, shall a man do what? Leave son and mother, and shall do what? Cleave unto his wife, and they shall become what? That phrase one flesh means one person. They use flesh to talk about person. So that phrase one flesh means one person. Two of you becomes one. Marriage is a covenant, and I think you must have this mindset. So don't have the mindset of, oh, we're going to, our money will be different, but we are married. No. When you are joined to somebody, you are one person. One person. You are not two. Nothing should separate you. Anything striving to separate you will separate the marriage. That's why you can't start separating your money. That's why God doesn't expect. All right? I understand some people might be in peculiar situations, so I understand though. But I'm saying what the ideal from God's idea and God's mind is, is that the two of you will do everything, not just money. Everything will be seen as our own. No more my in the marriage. Everything should be ours. So it's nothing like, you know, some women say, "Eh, your money is my money, but my money is my money. No. It's our own. Everything is what? Ours. The word my becomes like a curse word in that marriage. You don't say my money. You don't say my shoe. You don't say my house. It's our money, our house, our shoe, our car. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? He said the two of you shall become what? One person. Everything is joint. So for us from day one, we've always had a joint account from scratch. There's never been a time where I'm wondering what's in our account or was it? No, it has always been together. All right? You can plan together. That coming together... That's where the power of covenant is. That two people are operating as one. There is nothing that becomes impossible to you. Matthew 18 says, What two of you shall agree upon as touching anything shall be what? Established. So marriage is a covenant. And that's why, for the people that came out, that's why I want to talk about those mindsets. You can trust your life to somebody, but you can't trust your money to them. I remember when one woman was having a bath and people were in the house. She ran out with soap in her body and her towel. Bwah! They said, Auntie, what's wrong? What's wrong? She ran to her room. They said, what's wrong? She said she left her wardrobe open and her husband is in the room. <laughs> and her money is there. So you can trust. You can trust this man with your whole life. But you can't trust him with your money. Your money and your life, which one is more important? Your life. There are many people that want to save their money. But they don't want to save their life. Look, if you can't trust that man with your money, then it means you can't trust him with your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? I watch because the person you are marrying is the first person that can kill you the easiest. They can poison you, you can die the next week. They can kill you. You want to trust them with your whole you sleep in that person's house. You close your eyes. That person can do anything to you. They can poison you. That person gives you food. They can kill you. I watch crime channels a lot from the US. And once somebody dies that is married, or even if he has a girlfriend, the first suspect. Say, ah, my husband is dead. They say, Yeah, sorry, yo. Where were you in yesterday night? You are the number one source. And a lot of times, that person has a hand in it. If somebody, so those of you watch your home video, they are real. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So marriage is a covenant. That's why you change names when you marry. You are now one with that person. You no longer bear two. Everything about marriage is trying to turn both of you to one. The moment you start separating your money, you start separating your lives. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So marriage is a covenant. And in God's mind, nothing should be separate. And coming together as one... AIDS transparency, AIDS vision. All right, next point. Okay. So the next point is that when it comes to finances, you must be responsible. So don't be a waster, don't be a deadweight. I know that this evening we've established that both parties are supposed to be involved in providing for the home. But that does not mean as a man, you now become lazy. And unfortunately, it's becoming a thing yeah. in this generation. Most men are just, okay, we marry a woman that can pray, a woman that can bring money. They just want to relax. You can't be a dead weight. And that scripture I read to you before. Let me read it to you in the message translation. So, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from 10 to 13. It says, don't you remember the role we had when we lived with you? It says, if you don't walk, you don't eat. And now we're getting reports that a bunch of lazy good-for-nothings are taking advantage of you. When I read the scripture, I was just thinking of my sister's. A lot of people are in relationships with men that are not doing anything. He's lazy. All he's doing, every time you go out, he has forgotten his wallet. Every time. Um, just get this one next time, baby. I'll, I'll get the next one. And there's never a next time when he, what are you doing now? Um, 
Aha, I have this big project. I'm working. It's always I'm working on projects. <laughs> always planning to. I'm mm. planning to. Um, baby, I'm planning to. Don't marry. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. I don't care how many people fight me on social media. Don't marry a lazy man. Don't marry a lazy woman. Don't marry an individual that is lazy. They will drain you. Mm. I can't count the number of women that their lives are literally shut down because they married lazy men. Mm. And it always starts in the relationship. You can see he's not paying for things in the relationship. Every month he's loaning from you. Every month he's borrowing from you and from other people. In fact, they are calling you for the ones, all those cash apps. They are now calling you. Mm. That you know so so and so person is owing us. Yes. And you still want to go ahead with the relationship. You still want to marry this person. Then you get married. He doesn't pay house rent. You have to work and get house rent. You have to work and get school fees. You have to work, pay hospital bill. I know one woman that was in the hospital. She was almost dying. This one, they didn't just me, I know her. She was almost dying. And they were telling her husband that she has to do CS. They say, ah, it doesn't have money for CS. She was inside. She was shouting, I will sign, I will sign. I will pay, I will pay. And unfortunately, in Nigeria, nobody pays attention to the woman. They think that the man is the one who's going to pay the bills. The man was still outside arguing. How much is that one? Why can't she push like a mate? Or got shifts. Even if she pushed like a mate, you will still not pay that one. So don't get yourself entangled in things that you, you will regret it. Mm. Buying a man that is lazy. Mm. I heard the story of one woman who was in her office. Her husband called her. Mm. And she should come home. She should come home. She lives in Ikorodu because that's where she can afford to pay. She works on the island. She ran, climbed this thing, entered Ted Mainland, got to Ikorodu, and got home. Her husband was sitting on the couch. Oh, that DSTV has finished. That's why I was calling her. <laughs> True story. Yeah. True story. Yeah. Those are the things that people get themselves roped into. Yeah. And young girls will tell you, you don't understand, but I'm in love. See, let's say love is blind. Marriage is an eye open now. When you enter inside, you understand. And that's why we have so many broken homes today. Because mm. the woman is exhausted. Mm. She's exhausted. Don't marry a man that is lazy. Don't let anybody take advantage of you. He says we command them to get to work immediately. No excuses, no arguments. And let them earn their own keep. Let them earn their own money. If you are out of work, as a, be useful in other ways. I know there are men in marriages today that maybe they lost their job for some reason. Then be useful in other ways. If she's going to work, she shouldn't go to work. Still come back, pick children from school, go to market, cook for you. You are not balancing there. There has to be something you to bring to the table. It's a partnership. Mm -hmm. Don't kill somebody's daughter. Mm. Praise God. And when I'm talking about being responsible, I also need you to understand that it starts from now. As a single person, you must have good work ethics. Christians are the worst people. In fact, sometimes they are the worst people to work with. And I'm praying that this generation will change the narrative. It's not when you get to the office that you now start some sometimes it's not when you now to start uh, quiet time. That's when you start reading your Bible when you should be working. You did not pray at home, it's in the office. Christians have terrible work ethics. Work, hard work, hard work does not kill anybody. Work. This generation is so lazy. You see, so many people tell you things like you don't understand. Don't judge people when they are doing runs because you don't know what their background is like. If you had this, let me tell you, people have choices. There are some people that had a difficult background and they started washing clothes. Side chick is not a job the last time I checked. It's not a job. Dating a married man is not a job. You can learn tailoring. You can cook. You can clean. There's dignity in labor. And for the men, because I know that that's another thing that is raining for young boys these days. If it's not internet fraud, they are side gigolos. Yes. Because I was going to say they are side chicks, side cocks. Side kukuruku, whatever you are. <laughs> there's, you see, there's no, there's no, there's the, that, the end of that thing you are doing here eh, is destruction. Is destruction. And those things are habits. When you have formed the habit of not doing anything and expecting money, when you get into marriage, you will expect mm. the same treatment and you will frustrate each other. Mm. So you are, all you are doing 
He's sleeping with women that are old enough to be your mother and they're giving you money. Then you now expect that because you are sleeping with your wife at home, she should go and bring money for you. Mm. <laughs> it will shock you. And the, the real reason why these things happen is because people do not have contentment. Be content with what you have. You can't be eyeing phone that is bigger than your entire, mm. your entire mom month salary. People mm. are carrying phones. Their mother is in the village, in, in a broken down house. You are buying a, a what, bone straight. You are buying bone straight of, I can't even call the money, but your salary. Mm. <laughs> The Bible is very clear. First Timothy 6.6, 6, the NLT, I love it. It says, yet, true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Be mm. satisfied with what you have. Mm. Don't, and don't, don't live beyond your means. It's, it's incredible. People that say they are looking for capital, they are carrying iPhone 13 Pro. How are you looking for capital? And that's why people are so greedy these days. If you carry that habit into marriage, your marriage will wreck. Mm. If you're already used to men giving you money and you don't want to marry one young boy who is starting mm. life, mm. you frustrate him. How much is his salary? His salary is what they are giving you for transport. <laughs> yes, now. Abuja, Lagos, Portacot. Abuja, Lagos, Portacot. They'll give you, you fly there, they give you 200k. They fly there, they give 500. You fly there, 1.2. The boy cannot even earn 1.2 in a year. So everyone needs to be responsible. The habits you are forming now mm. will affect you in marriage. Mm. Point number what? Is it seven or eight? Seven. seven. Okay, next point. Who should run the family finances? Who is supposed to manage the family finances? Um, the right thing is that whoever is more financially prudent should run it. Um, when we first got married, we didn't have this kind of discussion. So... We just said, we'll run it together, everybody together, together, you know, and I was a financial wreck. Part of the last point we'll talk about is to find your financial habits. Whether I like it or not, you have prime financial habits now. Is somebody get what I'm saying? If you are always broke, always begging, always borrowing, it's a sign of your present financial habits. It's not the devil, it's not the economy. It's not the government. It's not Satan. It's a function of your financial what, habits. Who, is, who should run the family finances? Whoever is better woman. So when we got married, like I told you, we were just both great guys, but I was financially reckless. I didn't even know. I didn't know. I was just <laughs> wasting money. Now, the only good thing a bit about our own was that I also used to make money. Just that I also used to blow it. Yeah, so other people, they, have this, my, they, they used to have this my habit of blowing money, but they don't make money. So that's a strain on your wife. But my own was good. I was making money only that as I make it, I blew it. So I had a very bad financial habits. You know, so um, when we got married, I was wrecked. Like I told you, wedding, we were planning wedding. We we're still begging the owner of the person that was renting out reception hall to give us discount. Oh. I now went to use the bathroom. I said, I want to use the bathroom. The guy now said, let me, let me go and show me. We went downstairs. We now show dogs that they are selling. <laughs> Somebody that's not paying. I came to pay for reception for wedding. We didn't even have the money. We didn't have the money. For reception, I booked two, two dog, two. <laughs> that was how I, I, I was, you know. How many of those people that op, they are incredible optimists? They always believe money will come. Let's be eating. Let's spend this one. On that one, go come. Give us suya, 10,000. Money will come, don't worry. Every single money what I get. The enjoyment. <laughs> Is that what you what I'm saying? Please don't try that rubbish. We went downstairs to ease ourselves. I, I, went, I went to the guy. My wife was, in, was upstairs. upstairs. So she found out we were staying long. Staying long. She came so down came to look, for, to look for us so that we were already prizing dog. I booked two. So on our wedding, after, I believe after reception, I mean after honeymoon, they delivered two dogs. I didn't even buy one. I said if I buy one, it will be lonely. So I bought two. 
See, you must cut your taste. Some of you now, you have those kind of bad financial, whether you're male or female. You just like buying things. Any new hair is out, you must buy. Any new earring is out, you must buy. They are passing by, selling something. You don't have, a, you say, okay, I'll pay you small, small. You are incurring debt on a family that is just fragile, that is new, that can't carry the weight. See, anybody can marry. It's because of the taste people have. You know that people that are earning 50,000, they are married? Yes. In this Nigeria. Yes. Not, not, I know them like this. Yes. They are putting 100,000, they are married. And they even have children. Mm -hmm. It's about cutting your taste. Your problem is not money, it's your taste. If you can cut your taste, you can live very well. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So I was a wreck financially. I was making money, I was spending it. And I discovered that whenever I needed money, emergency. People that are reckless, they always need emergency money. Because Everything comes as a shock to them. Yeah, because they don't plan. School fees come as a shock. House rent comes as a shock. Like, ah, it don't do you now, now. It don't do. <laughs> so I just discovered that anytime I needed money, emergency, my wife always had money. I said, how do you have money now? I said, okay, borrow me, she'll give me. Another girl said, I didn't somebody say she has. And I found out that this woman is always having money. And me, I never have money. Even though I make a lot of money. So it occurred to me that she's a better financial manager. You know those people that when you're in primary school or secondary school, during break, everybody goes to buy something. But they will keep their own biscuits. You know those people? All of us, we have eaten our biscuit during break. And drank our mineral. The last lecture of the day, when hunger and heat, uh, everything is killing everybody. You know, here. Hey! Who is opening biscuits in this time of the day? Yeah, at the back. And they are eating their biscuits small, small. All of us begging, say, okay, small, small. We will not look at refugees. And she's not cutting small, small. They always have. You know, there are people, no matter how bad things are, they always have. In marriage, I told you, I think I told you here last time I came, that they always save us and spend us. She's an incredible saver. So I found out that it's better to have money and not need it than to need money. And not have it. And not have it. I mean, I was the club of needing and not having. And she was the club of having and not. She always had. Tomorrow she's going to talk about, she's going to talk about uh, money personalities tomorrow. That's why you must invite people here tomorrow. She's going to talk about money personalities. Then me, I'm going to also talk about how to release your faith. And I'll pray for you. You see, billionaires and multi-millionaires will rise from here in the name of Jesus. Listen very carefully. Some of you, you'll be the youngest millionaire in your family. I kid you not. I kid you not. I'm going to pray for you and show you in scripture. I've, I've seen young guys do big things. Legit. You don't have to do 419. And EFC will be chasing you. Nonsense. You make money with peace. The blessing maker is rich and added no sorrow. So don't miss tomorrow for anything. And call people, text people, carry people here tomorrow. If somebody gets what I'm saying, we're on a mission here this weekend. So I was reckless like that. Wasting money. And I found that she always had money. And it now occurred to me that, look, if this girl always has money, better for her, to, for her to manage our money. It means we will always have money. And since that time, brethren, <laughs> my life has never remained the same. I put it to you that we have money now. Before, only I had money. Now we have money. Praise God. Now we actually have money. Now my account is fine. You know when your account is where you look at your happy, you're not happy. Even though there's problem in the world, but you look at your account, you're just like, oh. <laughs> you're smiling like McLean toothpaste advert. Yeah, because I had to trust her with the finances. So now, before we do anything, she must give the go-ahead. And you know, save us. No matter how excited you are, save us are never excited. See, this thing is cheap. It's on sale. This is the last one they have in the whole world. If you don't buy this one, that's save us. I don't like you. <laughs> save us. They don't spend. No matter what you But we spend us. They always, always steal our money. They say this is the last one. It's on sale. It's half the price. If it, after this one, they won't make it. Good things never finish. At all. So you must cut your spending. Look for people you can, that can hold you accountable financially now. Start now to change your spending habits. Somebody get what I'm saying? So who should manage the money at the home? Whoever is more financially prudent. Whether so male or female. Whether male or female. All right. Okay. So since he has told you about yes. that part, let me tell you about how, it is, how you can deal with a reckless spouse when it comes to money. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Thank God is the one that shared that story. <laughs> so, um, the truth is that at that time, for those all those years, and it was a long time mm. because people, I mean, it was a long time. <laughs> and it was a miracle we didn't fight and we didn't quarrel. Interesting. Yes, it was a miracle because it was a long time. He didn't mm. get it for a long time. Mm. Basuke was very reckless. Mm. I mean, there were times when we could, when we got married, things were really we didn't we didn't start out 
with money. We didn't start out in wealth. We didn't have so much. Um, I just finished my master's at the time, so I didn't have a job. And then he, um, he was working as a pastor, pastor but church wasn't paying him a salary. So I was literally living by faith. Mm. You know, whatever, you know, whatever mm. we get, that kind of thing. And for some crazy reason, I was okay. You mm. know, so the thing is also, and I'm going to talk about that tomorrow, the way you raise your children. Mm. I was raised around money, so money was a tool. I, I didn't see money as mm. a reward. I didn't see money as something that, hey, if I don't have it, I would, mm -mm. I was very comfortable with money is for, for doing things, which is why I'm such a, spend, I'm such a saver. Like money is for doing things, for achieving goals, it's for meeting needs. It's not necessarily something you should worship. That like if you don't have, you don't, you know, and if you have money, you now want to, you now want to reward yourself for what? Relax. Nice, yeah. You know, so that also helped me, knowing that I can survive. I didn't have an unhealthy relationship with money. Mm. So when, he, when we got married, um, things were not so great. But he was making, at some, at some point, he's not saying making money. Um, mm. We went on Silverbird, and at that time, itinerary mm. blew up, mm. and it became really popular at that time, and all that. And I remember that we had money, but my husband always came up with one crazy dream or the other. And because he's a speaker, he has this habit of being able to convince you to do, he will give you scriptures, he will give you faith. Is it, so is it like you don't have faith? You don't have faith. Yeah, I'm like, I have faith. But this thing will not go by him. <laughs> so initially, I didn't recognize it. Let me be fair. I didn't recognize it as him almost borderline being manipulated because he can talk you into doing, Pascal can talk you into doing anything. So the first time when he wanted to buy those dogs, when I came down, he was saying, ah, he needs dog. Dog is nice. He's well, we also have a dog in the family, blah, blah, blah. He shot talk, talk. I said, okay, I don't like dogs, but I'll do this for you, but let's buy one. He said, ah, no, 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 no. You can't buy one dog. <laughs> he said, ah, it will be lonely. And if it's lonely, it can die on time. So I said, all kinds of, he told me all kinds of things. I said, he said, ah, he has been having dogs since, so it's not today he's having dog. That did I have that? I said I didn't have dogs. Yeah, that's why I don't know. That they have to be two. And you know these ones, they, they flew them in from the UK. Yes, they're important. And yes. so they're, they're brothers. And you can't separate Expensive them. Expensive dogs. So my husband shall got his way and bought that one. Now what annoyed me about those dogs was that they were very, very not, not expensive. They were very reckless. So they would enter our home and tear the stroppy lows. There was one day, that time we managed, I managed to believe God for money, cook one better soup, went upstairs to sleep, that I'm going to surprise my husband. Came downstairs, they had licked my pot clean. They would climb on the gas cooker. Yes. Uh, corporate, you know, the two of them corporating. Yes. One would lift the cover, the other would pull her inside. They've, you know, so there were things like that. And when I was just surviving that one, my husband comes back one day and says to me that, oh, um, you know these ones are pit bulls, they are too rugged. That he just bought, he just saw one lassa. It's very cute. Ah, that it will be fine. I see. He convinced me that, that this one, this one will breed, we will sell leads. I said, okay, no problem. We took that one. Three dogs, Abby. One day, my husband went out, came back, and carried one thing. I don't know what I said, elephant. I think I'm moving to the next point now. Move to the next point. <laughs> Anatomy is a South African Babu. It was brindle in color. When the thing stands, it, it stands yes. past okay's height. Massive dog. I say, where did you? He said the dog, I uh, know that he got a deal. That the dog is 250k, but somebody gave him a good deal. How is it a deal? <laughs> <laughs> so he shall psych me, psych me, psych me. That's it. Ah, this is a deal, a once in a lifetime deal. This is the pure breed one. Is this 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 shall talk, talk, talk. I didn't ask too many questions. After a while, they now came, after that, they say, ah, that the dog does not eat normal food. Mm. That there's one particular uh, factory that you have to go and buy Indomie mm. residue. There's a way they mix mm. it, and then you must give it one full Titus every day. I say, Titus that we used to eat two days or three, self. <laughs> and we give the dog only one Titus. And truly, if you give the dog food without Titus, it will go like this and walk away. Ah. So, as if these things <laughs> continued... You know, I was reckless. From there, he liked tennis, he liked pool, then he bought a pool table, then he said, ah, that pool table cannot be, cannot enter our house, so it will have to be outside. Then it cannot be in the rain. Then he has to build a carport for it. Then the carport is not, it's not covering fully. Like, crazy things. And he would, he would really, I and mean, then he would pull all his, 
into convincing me and all that. So after a while, I now realized that, no, this thing is not going to work. Mm. So I started doing a couple of things. And those are things I want to quickly run through for mm. you in case you find yourself in that situation, which I pray you will not. <laughs> if you are single, walk away. If you are married, uh, then attention. you can do these things. Okay? So the first thing was I started praying. I started first of all praying about the situation. Like, ah, like, like, like this is how this man will just be spending money. God, are you there? You're not doing anything. So I started praying about it and I started praying for him. Because I needed him to be able to, I needed him to be receptive to when I want to talk to him. You see, when you don't want firewood to catch fire, you wet it well, well. So I wet him in prayer. So that when I want to tell him, he will not take it the wrong way. You, you know, Satan can just put hand in your matter. Because we had a great relationship. We're not quarreling, we're not fighting. This thing was paining me, but I didn't, I, didn't want, I didn't want the atmosphere of my home to change. Because we're great friends, we play, we talk. So I didn't want the situation to tell him something. You're not start acting up. Now say, you're challenging me. You're all those things that Satan can just put in his head. Are you not the head? Why is she talking to you? All those things. <laughs> so I said, I'm not doing this. Thing. So I started praying. I prayed about it. The second thing was, I realized that I needed to have conversations with him. Whenever I was doing this thing, I had to bring it to his attention. I had to stop indulging it. Some of us are feeding that habit. So when he comes and says, oh, put, I say, we're not buying put table. He said, I know. See, honey, wait, you don't understand. That last one was not original. I said, but you said you wanted it. We bought it. And it didn't work out. We're not buying it again. Now it's my turn to want something. He said, hey, okay, what do you want? I said, I will buy something before you buy another thing. I mean, I will never buy anything. So that's Kukuma has cancelled it. So I had to pray. God gave me wisdom. And I started having those conversations. Only well, if you don't do this, you know you won't die, Abby. You know you won't. And he, he, he was a big deal. So we started having those conversations. Have those conversations. And don't bring it from an emotional point of view. Be a bit logical. Have your facts. So I had to bring facts. He would say, and he never remembers these things. Me. When I say we should buy two dogs, I say, sir. <laughs> you actually, I gave him the date, the time, this is what you said. Rain was falling. I told him, like, you have to bring your strong reasons. So have those conversations. Don't make them emotional. Don't make it about, don't attack the person. You must confront but lovingly. Okay, whether it's male or female. Because some women too have this habit. Mm. Every ashwabi you must buy. Mm. Every, why? Every hair. Every hair that passes. The new phone. Mm. They are deceiving you. What did they change in this iPhone now? The next one is one, they will add one dot somewhere. Even car. They will change lights. They will say it's new model. How? Side mirror. Uh -huh. So I had to have those conversations with him that this thing is not going to work. It's not sustainable. And because I had prayed, he was more receptive. Even though he would still chance me and say, eh, okay, after this one. <laughs> Who are we laughing, please? Does he behave like that? Happen? <laughs> okay. Then the next thing is you need to protect yourself. Okay. Mm. If you, are, if you are living with someone who is reckless with money, you need to find a way to protect yourself. Mm. So for us, we started doing what we call spending money. So because all our money is together, my husband will say, okay, this spending money, take this money, I'll take this money. And then that spending money, I will still go and save my own. Because I needed to be safe. Like I felt we needed to have an emergency fund. Anything can happen. Mm. Thankfully, at the time, we didn't have kids. Imagine if we had kids. Children don't understand faith though. They are hungry, they are hungry. They want to use pampas. They want to use pampas. Yeah. You can't say be, be clean in Jesus' name. <laughs> they, you will change diapers. You will pay school fees. Yeah. So for me, I had to have an emergency fund. So I had to have savings. Now, the, the times he was saying when he needs money, it was always about something that was major and something that I knew was really important. I remember there was one time he really needed money to add up to. He was trying to buy land at that time. I don't even know whether it was because of investment. I was just excited because some things would just be excited. So he wanted to buy land. I was doing I said, okay. I have the balance for you. And you were shocked. So those kind of things, I will bring out money. Other than that, we don't have, sir. You don't have. It's not spending, it's saving, okay? So I had to have, you know, protect yourself. Um, and another thing is, if it's a joint account, and you know his request, make sure it's not either to sign. Both of you must sign. Both of you must agree before any money moves out, okay? Um, for us, I get all the alerts. So he can't make any transactions without money. Immediately money moves like this. What's this? What happened? <laughs> he doesn't get any alerts. I don't know why he trusts me so much. He doesn't get any alerts, but I get alerts. Um, he can't make any financial decisions alone. And we always make sure that all our big bills are paid first. So before he start doing anything, mm, less parents, mm, school fees, before you start flexing. So make sure that all of that. Uh, another thing is please make sure you plan your income. Don't leave any money lying around that is not useful. If you just leave money lying around, he will spend it. Mm. 
or she will spend it, okay? So make sure I call every money his name. Um, another thing is put aside flexing money for them. If you're married to a spender, it can be really frustrating and caging. So, so what I used to do was, if he had been good, in quotes, for a long time, I would, a treat. So I remember there was one year he wanted this power bike and he had preached up this sermon about this power bike. We had gone to the UK, look for it. Went to Dubai, look for it. Went, after he had talked, talk, 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 I just said, let's buy the power. He was so happy, he was so excited. And then after that, he behaved himself for a long time. Because every time he looks at the bike, he's like, okay, this is the money. Because I made it clear that this is the money. If we didn't save this money, now you may be able to buy this bike. Do you see? And the bike fits you. See as we fly. See as, you know, I, I would just meet I started learning sweet mouth. I started hyping him to one. So sometimes just we kind of like a reward. Okay? It encourages them to stay um, faithful. Um, another thing is, um, like I said before, please ensure that you're not fueling these things. Like, if you know this person has your mumu button, because Pastor K, like Pastor K has sweet mouth, he can psych me. You know? and, and the truth is, a lot of times when he's doing all the psyching, I know he's psyching me. I just allow him. I was like, okay. But I had to at some point put my foot down. That no, we're not going to do this. But always respectfully. Okay, it's very important that you must be respectful about it. Whether it's a husband or a wife you're talking to. Okay, be very respectful. And finally, make sure that the things you are seeing in your husband, you are correcting in your children. So that you don't give another woman this heart attack mm. that you are receiving now. Make sure your children have better financial intelligence, they have yes. better relationship with money, they have better yes. spending habits. habits. So you teach them, it's not everything. I don't believe any human being should spend everything they have. Yes. How? How? Any money that, if you give me 1K, I will still save 600 naira. Somehow. Mm -hmm. There must be, they, they, if it's not a life or death situation, a lot of things that you think you can't do without. Yes. It, I'm telling you a lot of things. And I learned this when we were, we didn't have so much money. Maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. There are so many things that God helped me. There are times when I would just, all we would have in the house is flour, pepper, and salt. I would cook something out of that flour, pepper. You'll be amazed. I used to pray in tongues over food. And the food would come out sweet. It's not until you have chicken, snail. Some people even have everything chicken, snail, crab, shrimp, prawn. Mm. The food don't go still sweet. Yes. So it's not by that. So mm. there are some things that you can do without. As much as we want, uh, they are, they, as much as women want to dress many things, not every, see, you can mix and match. You wear clothes, people will think it's a new one. So it's wisdom much more than money that you even need when it comes to marriage. Yeah, you didn't put, also demonstrate the benefits of... Oh, uh, I was trying to do that tomorrow. Okay, oh, so, you really want to no, no, tomorrow. let me do it quickly, since you've okay. said it. <laughs> okay, so another thing is make sure that you project. So demonstrate... The benefit. So what I did, instead of nagging him and telling him you are spending my money, I started saving intentionally, so that any time he needs money, I would give him to show him this is the life of a saver. If you would just save, it would be like this. So at some point, what what I started doing also was I started saving for him. Mm -hmm. So I now had an arrangement with our accountants that once money comes in, money is to come in. So when money comes in like this, this is the amount you must take out every time money comes in. I said, this is the amount you take out that it's large enough to save and too, too small for him to notice. So she said, doing it. we did this thing for almost one year before Pastor K now caught us. He now said, why? Who told you? Why are you moving this money? So the girl now said, ah, I think you should talk to Pastor M. So he now comes to me and says, no, he now says, what do you mean by that? She now says, ah, it's Pastor M that said I should move it. He now said, Pastor M doesn't buy anything, but I'm noticing that this money is going frequently or every week, this particular amount of money is going, what's going on? So he asked me. I said, well, Mr. Don't don't tire for secrets. I'm saving money for you. So he asked me how much the money was, and it had come to a considerable amount. Mm -hmm. He was so blown away that you were able to save millions. I said, yes. He said, and I didn't know. Oh, yeah, now let's start. So he now got, you know, it was now a challenge for him. Like, eh, this one I didn't notice. So yeah, now let me now save him money that I would notice. And then so we started saving money. We now have a system that there's a certain amount of money that he never touches. So that's why he's happy now. Very happy. Money is <laughs> I'm very, very happy. So, I kid you not. <laughs> so now, with his permission, yes. we are now doing it. But I took, it took me a while. Mm. There were days where I was frustrated. But I had mm. to do it God's way. Fighting yes. never gets anything done. Yeah. That's the truth. Fighting never done it. There's a saying I heard many years ago. It says that war never proves who is right, only who is left. And that thing, I translated into my marriage. It's never about, you know, fighting to mm. win the argument. Fight to win mm, the agreement. agreement. Fight for your marriage. So I knew that uh, this man, this is this challenge. I can help. 
I'm not going to complain about it. I'm going to do something about it. And so we started working. And today, he's even, I think he's, he's almost even now more of a, spend, a safer safe. Because now I spend on our children. Yes. yes. So I love saving more, now after I've yeah. seen the benefits. Yeah. So now he saves him. She lot. has converted me. Praise God. And lastly, in closing, we'll take like five questions before we go. Like I said, tomorrow, don't miss tomorrow. But in closing, last point here, always be on the same page. Whoever you're getting married to, be on the same page as regards money. Talk about money. You know, talk about dreams and goals. Don't save because of fear. Many people save for the rainy day. It's already raining. <laughs> save. That's one of the lines yes. you used to use those days. It's already raining. Yes. So Jesus save. will soon come. <laughs> save, for, save for goals and projects and plans. It's better to save for something than you're saving out of fear. All right? You guys come together and agree. That's what we did the, the, the couples game we did. Many couples are not actually on the same page. We need to know how much we are, as we are here now, eh, we know how much we are trusting God for. There's a figure we are trusting God for. And every time, if we achieve that goal, we set on that goal. So we are not saving out of fear that Nigeria will soon scatter. I don't have, my and Nigeria don't have a problem. <laughs> do you understand? Somebody gets what I'm saying. Don't save for the rainy day. It's already raining. What you need to do is save for a plan. Okay, we want to, we want to buy a house. We want to buy this. We want to hit this amount on our savings account. So save towards something. You know, because uh, I met one man in the mall one time. He said, ah, Pastor K, watch your program. He said, where's your wife? We were together in the mall. She was buying something. He said, ah, so she's buying something. He said, ah, you left her alone to go and buy something. I said, yes. He said, won't she finish the money? I said, she won't because we already have a budget. We have a plan. Many men don't carry their wives along in terms of the plan. They just want to save. Say, if I tell her how much, you eat it. No, no, no. Don't just hide the money because you eat it. Give her a big picture. Give her a vision. If she, if she catches the vision, she will save more than you. Not just say, hey, I'm saving. Tell her, look, we're saving to buy a house. Honey, I want to build you a house. And in that house, you have your own room where your clothes will be. You have a place where your shoes Please will line up. Me. You know, yes. And, you, <laughs> and the wardrobe we have, but impress your shoes will just come out like this. You have a bubble bath, a jacuzzi. Hey. When you paint the picture to her, now your children will have their own room. We will color it, you know, boys' room, girls' room. <laughs> and your kitchen like this. And your kitchen, there will be an island in the middle. There will hey. be this, there will be that. By the time you paint that picture, she will save more than you. Amen. But many men are not casting vision. So be on the same page. Check each other's financial habits. Check each other's parents' financial, financial habits. habits. Because most times you inherit some of those habits from your parents. Yeah. If you grow up in poverty, you will love money. Because here, yeah, yeah, you see money. Here, yeah, you want to spend. Spend 10,000 naira suya. Yeah, say reward. <laughs> because, when, <laughs> because when you're young, you never ate suya. Then you want to finish it. You know, you have all those mindsets. You know, if, if you are rich too, you have your own mindset. Because for some rich people, going on vacation is not luxury. No, it's not. It's part of life. I want to go on vacation. To a poor person, going on vacation is like, ah! So, you have to discuss those things, check each other's financial habits, be on the same page. Matthew 18, he said, whatever two shall agree okay, upon, one. shall be established. There's nothing we've agreed about that has not happened, especially our financial goals. Tomorrow we'll share a bit more about that. Praise God. Were you blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Before we pray for you today, like I said, tomorrow, don't miss tomorrow. Before we pray, I want to take five questions. Just five. We'll take five. Then we'll pray. Praise God. You marry a Boaz. And you also marry a Ruth. Amen. Yeah, no idleness in our lineage. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we'll take five questions. Pastor, are they going to write it? Or how are they going to do it for us? Just five, all right? If we don't take a question today, we'll probably we'll have time and that they will do it. But I want to take five. And it must be financial related. Don't just ask me, where should I find a husband? That's not what I'm asking. That's not today's topic, all right? Just five solid ones. Somebody will read it through. Five solid, financially related somehow, so that we can address it. Don't forget, our books are out there. Make sure you pick it up. There will be a blessing. Tomorrow we'll do some book signing after the service. How many people are coming tomorrow? How many people are bringing somebody tomorrow? Bring someone. Everybody should bring someone. I want the whole hall to be jammed tomorrow. Okay, so we'll take just five questions. Please raise your hands yes. quickly. The first five. There's one to lead there. Mm -hmm. One. Oh, pink, please stand up. Pink. Yeah, really pink. There's one brown. Please stand up. Just stand up. Uh -huh. Two. Another guy at the back. Please stand up. So we have three already. Four. Number, who's number four? There's one there, number four. Please stand up. Stand up. If I, if I point at you. Who is there? Is there anybody? There's somebody there's anybody at there. the back there. Just take, write down the questions. There. Write it down. Everything. Yeah. So collect there's it. There's someone with a cap there. White cap. Uh -huh. Okay, five. Please stand up. Please stand up. So we have five already. Please write it down. Give them sheets. Of or they can they ask it verbally? It's faster. Okay, okay so ask, come, come out. Come just come out. So that you come and ask verbally. 
Abi? That, that will make it faster. Yes, that will be faster now. Yes, so has, Just ask come, us. Come, come out. Five, sharply. So you ask the old five questions at ask. once? <laughs> at once? Five, no, sharply. Ask one, sir. Ask one, Fast, sharp, sharp. One, one. Just one by one. Good, um, good evening, church. Good evening, Pastor Emma yes. Pastor K. My name is KB. So the question is, because I noticed most of the time that Pastor K would ask Pastor M when he needs some monetary help, yes. and she would. Is it a bad thing for Pastor M to require the money be paid back to her? Or just, oh, I needed money, you gave me, let it go. Is it a bad thing for her to insist that she gets the money back? All right. Very good question. Are you a lawyer? She's a lawyer. I've done this job a while. I've done this job a while, so <laughs> thank you. Do you want to ask, answer one after the other? Yeah, Funny no. enough, I never request it back because it's our money. Okay. That's how I see it. It's covenant, so it's 100% our money. When I need money, so I'll just take it. I do so. But I know that some families are very, they're very legalistic like that. So they have an agreement, you borrow money. If, if you know it's really going to upset your partner, but the original and the right thing, biblical thing, is that the money belongs to both of us. So I'm borrowing money from myself. I'm, am I going to pay myself? I mean, so. Yes. But for, for a lot of families, I know that. They are not that free. They, they are with not that money. free with money, so they want their money back. So. Mm. And um, they have to have an agreement before they start borrowing this money. Yes. So that it's easier. Okay, in one minute. Um, and you know, we mentioned that it's not by law, it's by, by love. love yeah. So what would love do? All right. However, sometimes asking him for that or him or her for that money will help them become more responsible, aware, yeah. you know, and responsible. Yeah. So I get what you're saying. So you have to do what occasion serves you yeah. at the time, yeah. depending on what stage you guys are in. She, she would never ask. She's not like that. She will never ask me. All right. But in some cases, truly, you need to let the person be yeah. accountable so that they won't see this lifestyle. So anytime I come out, just waste money. So I get what you're saying. So yeah. do association serve you in those cases? But they must have the conversation beforehand so that yes. it won't cause quarrel after. Yes. They must have that conversation. I'm giving his money. I'm expecting it back. Yes. And no assumptions. In some cases, the person, if he still doesn't pay you, so you know there's you, nothing you, you can do. You cannot do, do anything. Yeah. But I get your point. I get where you're coming from. Yes, follow up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. If, like for example, if he requests and I give to him, and I request and I give to him, is it okay for me to say, I can't give you because most of the time I've been giving Don't you, but you never give me back? Yes, sometimes you need Your to do that. If you yes. notice, she, she mentioned things like yeah, that. She yes. did things. To stop feeding. Stop feeding that bad habit. The habit. Of borrowing. Yes. Why doesn't he have? Yes. So it's like pouring water in a basket. That's yes. not, it's not, it's a money problem. Yes. Do you understand? So it's sometimes not it's to give them to. money. It's a mind, you need to deal with them. Why is this happening? Yeah. So a person can't deal with it, you will be in that cycle forever. Yes. So yes, I think that it's important like that, that you, there are times when... So uh, there are times uh, uh, I have to say no yes. to him, yes. and I don't have it. He helped me. Sometimes saying no will help the person. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good yes. <laughs> my, my name is Christmas. Um, Christmas? <laughs> are you serious? Oh, that's so nice. This I is like the first Christmas I'm Christmas. hearing. <laughs> as a name. Any Easter in the house? Oh. No Easter. I'm serious. I've never heard that name and I like it. Christmas. Okay. okay. I, I still want to clarify when it comes to that um, joint, joint account. account. Yes. Now, my ideology, um, you just that they wanted is, is, is it clear to clarify? Yes, that's that. No, thank you for that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. My ideology, why I said no joint account, if there, there should be a joint account, but is it right? For me, even when we have a joint account, is it right for me to have a personal account that he knows and he also knows the amount inside? Yeah. And it does yes. not stop me from, if I'm not touching the joint account, I can still take money from there and yes. do something for the family. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. yes. yes. Um, so, okay, go yeah, no, go ahead. No, no, baby. No, no. It's fine. We, we didn't have time to expand on all that, but um, that's, that's okay. As long as it's a general uh, pool of money, um, there are some couples that both spend from the same place, or sometimes they share spending money. Yeah. So that if you want to do some sort of things, you don't have to disturb the whole account to do that. So yes, you can have those small accounts by the side. Where So what we say is, it's either joint account or joint, joint accountability. accountability. So if you have a salary account, for instance, it can be a, can joint, be account. a joint account. You have to pay only you that yes. account. So I have to just trust what you are doing, and you have to be accountable Tables, with, yes. this is the money they've paid me, this is how much we're putting in our savings account, this is how much I'm spending for food. So in that case, what we have is joint accountability. 
not necessarily a physical joint account. account. Do we understand, guys? Yeah. We didn't have time to go into that in yeah, detail. So there's nothing wrong with that. Yes. You know. It's just that you were fighting your husband before he came. No, yes, so. And even your children, you are already talking about children, even though you don't have them yet. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. So I follow you a lot, and I see this as. So that's why you follow me here. <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead. That's an opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Sir. So about 10 hours or 11 hours ago, we posted something on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So responsibility is what differentiates fake love from real love. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how can we use finance? Or at what point can we use our finance to show, show love. that we really love the person, especially in relationship? Good. I, I answered those things here. That's why I said I was able to differentiate fake love and just feelings here. Definitely, um, giving is um, part of love. You must give. All right, so um, again, it's not by law, it's by love. I can't tell you that this is the day you will start doing it. When there's real love, it shouldn't be a, a command or a struggle. It should flow naturally. And that person shouldn't be entitled to think that hey, you must pay my transport. That's, that's a rescue, that's charity. The person's a rescue case. No, it should be out of the abundance of what is flowing. All right, but this book will help you can answer those questions here. Thank you, good question. You guys are not clapping, oh. Yes. Okay. Good evening, Sama. Good evening. My name is Odafe Elizabeth, and my question goes to us. Is it right to save for a particular um, plan or purpose, and in achieving that plan, go broke? Is it okay? Very is okay. It right? now, that's how all of us got here now. <laughs> yes, now. Of course, now. If you're starting life from zero and you don't have a sponsor or a rich parents or whatever, somebody in your lineage has to do that for prosperity to start. So all of us got here like that. All right, when we're saving for something big. When, when we're, I'm going to share some stories tomorrow. Make sure you come tomorrow. When we're even saving to sow, we, Wait, if you give me, if you dash me rice, bag of rice that time, I will sell it. Sell it so, of course, it's, very, it's the pattern of all the rich people you are seeing. Somewhere along the line, somebody had to sacrifice. Yes, that goal. Once you achieve the goal, the money will start flowing and you won't even remember the sacrifice. So, you are very on point. Bless you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Okay. Good evening, Pastor. Yes. Yeah, my name is Kenneth. Uh, my question is, um, in relationship, you talked about um, investing and letting your partner know what you are trying to do with the money. Yes. Now, there are, uh, there are some partners that don't understand investment. And then when you are trying to explain it to them, it looks like you are duping them or you are trying to be a criminal. So how do you deal with such partners that they are, maybe the way they grew up, their family or family background or something, they don't understand investment and business so how do you deal with such partner okay one house guys one house no um so is it relationship or marriage relationship, relationship. and the money is it your money or two of you own the money your money the person angry how you're sending your own money you understand? You understand? because um, you, we talked about trusting someone with your money yes yeah i know okay the person is not good in keeping money mm -hmm. so he lets the person handle it for him but found out that the mindset or the person has about investment is not what you have. And he feels like, okay, you want to take that money to go and spend, not to really invest. So how do you check? Okay, it, it, what you have there is not a money problem. It's a mindset and a trust problem. So that's what you should address. If two of you are not on the same page financially, then that's a big problem because this problem will continue forever. So carry her along, see whether you can teach her, show her these things. She can start, you know, and it's your money really. So just teach, show, explain. If you can't explain enough for two of you to be on the same page, then you have a serious problem at your hands. Not money. Money is not your problem. Understanding and um, compatibility is the real problem. You guys are not on the same page. And the problem will linger throughout your lifetime. So you may need to make some very hard decisions. Yes. Would you want to go ahead with this and be like this forever? Yes. Or do you want to just back out? Because two cannot work together. Except, except they, they agree. Yeah. All right. Okay, Last good evening. I have many questions, but I'll try and ask just one. Mm -hmm. The only one I want to ask is, you said that we should ask, uh, we should be asking questions to know about the financial, how people spend money before yes. you get into the relationship. Yes. But most days, trying to ask most questions, it seems like you're just being rude or you're prying too much into someone's personal. Yeah. Yes. So how exactly do you, not non-rudely, ask those questions? So I think that, first of all, the, the reason why this is an issue is that you're not friends. 
If someone is your friend, it's easy to ask them or to even, sometimes it's not even exactly. asking it, it's more like observing. Mm -hmm. So when we're saying ask the questions, is look out for the answers is what we're really saying. So if this person is your friend, it shouldn't be a problem. But usually, people don't have that level of friendship. That's why they feel that there's a problem. There are friends you have that there's nothing you can ask them. So work on the friendship, mm -hmm. then it will be easy. Secondly, do more about observing. Because sometimes, when you even ask questions, people give you the answers you want to hear. So it's important that you just look out for these things. How does this person spend money? Yes. Is this person always broke? Um, are they always buying things that they don't need? Yes. Can you survive being in a relationship with this person, understanding how they live with money, how they see money, how their habits are. Is this something you want to deal with for the rest of your life? Is this something you would like your children to pick up? Mm -hmm. You know, these are some questions you ask yourself. When you go somewhere, how do they act around money? If you even maybe don't have the money to pay for something for them, do they, yeah. or do they expect that yes. you will pay? Do they, are yeah, they entitled? Yeah. So they, those are just things that you will see for yourself. It's not really a question of asking it like, you know, it's an interview. All right. Were well, you blessed this evening? Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Give the Lord a big hand.